did you know instantly that's what you had envisioned and instantly were you like <laughs> told you people are gonna hate this told you motherfuckers <laughs> uh, we knew before it was painted that people were gonna hate it is your ADD self-diagnosed or was it clinically diagnosed? <laughs> I know. Nobody told me. I just thought that was normal, you know, like opening doors to 90 degrees and windows and, you know, just certain amount of stuff because it looks better. It's, and I'm like, you probably don't remember me, but I make this little magazine and um, I wanted to give you one. And he starts flipping through it and he just goes, must be nice not to have to write articles. And I'm like, I just cannot fucking win. <laughs> Dude, who is this? Steve Coonan. Welcome to Oil and Whiskey, an ironclad original. Today's guest is church equipped founder, designer, car enthusiast, overall guy who makes cool old stuff. School hot rod collector of cool shit. shit. Kobe Gortz. I think I said that right. We'll see. He'll tell us. Uh, on today's show, we welcome Kobe, photographer, designer, hot rod fanatic, and founder of Church Equipped. To find out more about Kobe's work, check out churchequipped.com. Also follow him on social media at Church Equipped and at Church Emporium. Ah, Emporium. It's another Emporium. Uh, one of my favorite Emporium words. Emporium is yeah. strong with yeah. oil and whiskey. Kobe, welcome to oil and whiskey. Is it is it Gewurz? Did I say that right? Yeah, I, I answer to Kobe, Corey, Colby, Kobe, Kirby, all of it. Got you. Yeah, I remember uh, it may, maybe still this way. Way back in the day, uh, ordered some of the first round of church equipped shirts, and I think was the email address or something. Maybe it was PayPal. It was like s spelled out C O B Y. Yeah, most people can't figure that out. <laughs> I got you. Yeah, the yeah. email address was like S E E O H. So like he was, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right on. So, yeah, Kobe, not Corey, not Colby. I did, Kobe. We got it. Yeah, we got it. You got to figure C. it out. Yeah, I just wanted to make, I, I make yeah, sure. Yeah. We need one of those yeah, cool like, graphics across the screen. <laughs> well, this is going to be awesome. Uh, we don't know each other. We've been fans of a lot of your badass <clears throat> shit for years. Uh, we've never been in the same circles to, to run into each other, um, but uh, interested in, in, seeing where all this, these fucking crazy ass ideas come from. Yeah, no, I'm happy to be here. Um, except for, I have to admit when I first got the invite, I waited a full 24 hours to reply in case you guys changed your mind. Uh, once you realize <laughs> that uh, you're going to be interviewing somebody that nobody's ever heard of. Yeah. <laughs> I, fig I figured you'd do that. Just think like you're trying to put up the persona that you're like super busy. Yeah, I'm like, uh, just, just, it's like a check, it's like a check calling thing. you. You don't just call her right back. Right? I'll just check my schedule. Yeah. I'll wait a little while. Let these guys simmer. Uh, no, I mean, everybody know whether they know you or they don't, they know your work. I mean, they've, anybody that's been in this industry for any period of time, they know Van Gogh. They've seen some of the small books. They've seen the magazines. They've seen some of the shirts. They've seen, whether they know it or not, they've seen your shit. You've been around shit. What? Uh, early mid two thousands in this. Yeah. Well, I know church started, uh, almost 20 years ago. And then I was, you know, at drag races and stuff like that. I, hanging out at car crap before that all the, all the way back 20 years ago that doesn't seem i remember all of those you know jalopy journal and oh, am yeah. and all yeah. that and the that was kind of where like, it started that was the heyday man there was some yeah. good stuff you had endless reading material yes I, lunchtime was like you had your set thing to do at lunch oh yeah yeah, I'd go to Borders or Barnes and Noble because I didn't want to spend the money oh, on anything. Kill a couple hours. Yeah, Sunday, and Sunday, I'd go and read like three hundred and seventy-five dollars worth of magazines, <laughs> car magazines. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit! And then we've talked about it before. Photo bucket comes along and kills just the entire <laughs> forum world. Yep. So uh, I got we got a little bit of show notes. I was reading here before. Uh, so you've obviously been in this shit for a long time. We talked about your dad uh, being a drag racer and NHRA tech guy and stuff like that. So SoCal drag strip. Your dad was a drag racer. Worked for NHRA. I don't really think you had a choice but to like be involved in this somehow. Sounds like you were ruined oh. from the get go. <laughs> Yeah, and the whole family too. I mean, when my dad became a Division Seven director, uh, he he was a high school teacher, and he quit teaching 
maybe a mistake in hindsight um, to to do the Division Seven director, but he would only do it if my mom could be his secretary. So between that and then my older brother, he was the senior photographer for NHRA for years. And he's, I mean, in my mind, he's one of the top five drag racing photographers of all time. Um, and then my younger brother, he went uh, the opposite route and actually went into working on cars uh, where I stayed on the design side. So he, for the last, he's not this year, but um, for the last 10 or 12 years, he's built all the suspension for Andretti's Indy cars. Oh, damn. damn. Yeah, that's not and just, that, that's not just working in, on cars. That's, that's, <laughs> no, no, no. Shit. <laughs> he, he started, I mean, from college, uh, he was on soccer scholarship in Hawaii. And uh, he got a call from, I don't know exactly who the call was from, but from Alan Johnson, the top fuel yep. team. Uh, after Blaine was killed at Indy, I think that was 96. And then the next year they had a car with Gary Selzy behind the wheel and my brother dropped out of school to go do the clutch on that. So he worked for Alan Johnson, got a championship. Then he went over to like a uh, Schumacher and worked on Whit Bazemore's car when he was head to head with Force. And then he went over to open wheel stuff. Wow, that's pretty so cool. All that's... deep in this crap. So <clears throat> what what year do you what year was it that you remember? Obviously, you're going there for a while, but did you like your earliest memories where you can think back about where stuff started sticking? And, and making that excitement meter kind of go off at the drag strip or at shows or something like that. And what kind of cars, I w I'm just trying to paint the picture in my head of the era, some of the stuff that was happening at that point at the at the precipice of, of everything that, that happened after the fact. Uh, probably late seventies, early eighties. It was gonna be like uh, Raymond Beadle, Don Perdome, uh, Dale Poldy, stuff like that. So the, the, uh, the best of the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was my favorite. You know, Daryl Gwynn was really young uh, when he was coming in before he got hurt. Uh, you know, Shirley and my dad knew them all. So we get to go hang out in their trailers or in the pits or, you know, sit in the cars or, or whatever. So it was kind of normal. It seemed like. It being that close to them, were they like larger than life and rock stars in your eyes or were they just like oh, the yeah. guys you hung out with? Just some dudes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always, I know that it always becomes more than this and I'm not trying to oversimplify. I hope you get the understanding of what I'm trying to say is at that early moment, there's one or two things that is the driving force. Why it's so fucking cool and why you're addicted to it. It could be just the way the engineering of the things are put together it could be just the speed. It could be the sound. It could be just because it's so badass and like anti normal culture. It seemed, you know, what do you, can you pinpoint what that was? Was it from a design standpoint and the crazy colors and stuff they were doing? Or was it just like, holy fucking shit. These are like rocket ships. I always like wonder what that thing is. It's different for everybody, you know? Well, the noise for me was one of it. Um, not the fact that you could hear it, but you could feel it like in your gut. If you're up near the starting line, I actually preferred to be as high up on the bleachers as I could near the finish line, because that's where the carnage was going to happen. <laughs> so we, we camp out. there was a group of us that would camp out with uh, cameras and they called us vultures. And there was like maybe a half a dozen of them. I mean, and just you hate to say it, but just like you want a funny car puzzle. <laughs> and then everybody would just run to the one hour photo thing and hope that they didn't screw it up or that you got it and then haul ass back to the track and try to sell it to magazines. So I, I really prefer the top end to see the speed and stuff like that. But the, I mean, the paint was awesome. Like when they had like cars had names and not sponsorships until like, you know, Budweiser King or whatever, it was still a name, but right. you know, like, War Eagle and Blue Max and uh, Harry Canary. I mean, it was just <laughs> free elephant. It was just, it was awesome. It was, it was just too much fun. You were probably a big fan of the uh, "And They Walked Away" series of videos. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they walked away. Decade of Thrills. All yeah. of them. Fuck. Those were the That's shit. Yeah. Like, the yeah. last yeah. from the past, yeah. right? and they walked <laughs> away for. <laughs> <laughs> 
And my dad, you could usually see my dad in there. I think he was the first one on the scene when uh, Shirley wrecked really bad. And that was one, like, we used to get a call when he was on the road and we'd always want to know, you know, who qualified first. But what we really wanted to know was who crashed. Um, and we knew it was, you know, odds are there wasn't going to be much in injuries because my dad was on, you know, he knew the guys from the safety safari and helped with some of the, the rule books and stuff like that. But when he called and said how bad that Shirley had wrecked, I, I distinctly remember crying about it. So. Wow. You're talk us through a little bit on the, you said, you know, selling those shots to the magazine, you've got, you know, a dozen of y'all out there. One, I mean, what are you shooting with? What got you into photography at that point? But then what does that look like at that time in that era of, like you said, trying to go and sell those shots? Because if there's a dozen of you, you've got very similar shots. Is it just like luck or random who got the best one or the thing? Like I'm interested in like how the magazine decides like, 12 different versions of the same kind of wreck or the same, you know, blower lid blowing at the same time or the same, whatever. And who gets what? Yeah. It'll be like, uh, you know, what's in focus. If you're like rear three quarter or in the front, like somebody might be standing, you know, down by the sand traps against the guardrail. We had access to some of that stuff because of my dad, we can get into restricted areas. Um, but up there, uh, I mean, I was using an old Minolta camera and then, um, I was, I wouldn't say following in my brother's footsteps, but he was, you know, he was a couple of years older than me and he was taking pictures. He had already been published. I think he was maybe a senior in high school, possibly a junior in high school. And then I think um, I got, uh, was up in Sonoma and I think Blair Spagawi had the, it was when they were just starting the um, aerodynamics with the spoon front end that would catch air. He got pretty high up on a wheelie, didn't but didn't flip over backwards. But I know I got that. Dave Benjamin just barbecued his funny car. And then um, Gary Ormsby had a pretty big wreck there also. And uh, I think I was a sophomore in high school, and that was the first time I got published. And I took the money that I got, which, I mean, wasn't a ton, and bought a better camera with a faster motor drive and then just kept going from that. How many kids gave a shit about that in high school? Are you trying to say, like, <laughs> no, just, I don't think you're pulling girls. Like, you know, like I just, uh, hey, no, baby, yeah. <laughs> want to see some pictures? That's, uh, Ew, no. <laughs> it's no. just, yeah, I mean, what is such an absolutely, like, <clears throat> personal milestone, you know, and that gratification of, like, holy shit, can you believe that I got published, you know, it's sophomore cool. in high school? And like you said, it's just such out of the wheelhouse of, of probably most of your 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 classmates and stuff that you can't be like, oh yeah, you want to see something cool? Yeah, you want to see something cool? And that's it's funny to what, me. What's the payday look like on something like that? You negotiate with them, or they're you're yeah, spreading they out your pictures, and they're just like, here's what you get. Yeah, it was probably a per picture. I mean, I can't imagine that that issue was over 500 bucks i mean it was enough to buy a camera and a motor drive so and then it depends though because some people would shoot minolta some would shoot nikon or pentax so like my brother i think at the time was shooting pentax so we couldn't share lenses which not not too smart i mean we weren't always <laughs> around each other anyway but uh yeah, it was, it was, you know, competitive and stuff like that, but he was so good. And then when he went to, he started off at junior college and he came home and uh, I mean, it was right down the street, but uh, he set up a black and white photo lab. So we couldn't, uh, I couldn't do the film, but I could print images in the bathroom upstairs. You know, we have all the chemicals and the towels under the door. So the light doesn't seep in and stuff like that, but he could do the film and we'd make those and get them signed or, you know, whatever, but. Yeah, I mean, I, think I was just falling in, in his his footsteps. The funny thing is, when we were kids, there was, a, I can't remember the name of it. It was a Kodak camera, and it was shaped like um, like an ice cream sandwich. Like, like a, yeah, like an ice cream sandwich, I guess. And it had a, a top that you would fold down and almost become like a handle, and then you could shoot it. And it was like 110 film or something like that. But we had this little funny car that was called the Ground Shaker, ironically the same name as one of my dad's dragsters. And you pull it back and then it, it goes or whatever. But we started shoving 
you know, toilet paper and newspaper in it and we'd set it on fire and send it down the drag, you know, the driveway. And my brother would be down there with this little camera trying to get <laughs> shot. Like when he's, you know, 10 years old or something like that. And then he ends up doing that for a living. It's pretty awesome. That is crazy. That's wild. So <laughs> where, at this point, you're following your brother's footsteps. You've got some success. You're getting published. You're in high school. It comes time to, to look at college. Are you, are you drawing and doing any type of design stuff at that point? Or is it photography only? Uh, drawing also. I am. My brother wasn't. Right. Um, I was drawing. I wasn't like a big party or anything like that. So I'd stay home and draw. But when I looked at colleges, I knew um, Cal State Fullerton was a really good one for having an art department. But we didn't we had a small high school, so we didn't really have uh, art classes. I think there was a ceramics class. So I didn't know what a portfolio was. So when I applied to college, they're like, you need a portfolio. And I'm like, what's a portfolio? So I asked the ceramics teacher and I literally like went home on a weekend and drew like, you know, 10, 10 pieces of art and then send them in. And the next thing you know, I'm going to college. I'm telling you, you missed out on the ceramics. I'm telling if you, <laughs> if you done photography, ceramics, stayed home and not partied <clears throat> on the weekends and like draw, like you were talking about, like you'd have all the chicks with ceramics. You think so? Yeah, oh yeah. No. Swayze did and ghost. Yeah, <laughs> Swayze, Swayze knocked it out of the park. On that one. Yeah, yeah. So you you go you go to college. You're into the art thing. You want to get an art degree. Do you know at that point in time what you want to do? No, no. I just knew. I didn't really know what graphic design was. I absolutely loved it in school. And then my senior year, you have to take uh, to be design like well any of the majors. You have to take like a drawing class, a painting class, um, a typography class, whatever. Um, so, you know, I did that and you get those knocked out early. And then by the end you have to take, um, I think it's four units of life drawing. <laughs> and I knew I was going to be on the computer and not drawing fat, hairy people for a living. <laughs> so I made a deal with the Dean of the art department that, um, if he found a class to put me in, that would give me life drawing credits without taking life drawing, I would take that class. And it was the first year they offered an entertainment design class. And, uh, so I took the class and it was movie posters, logos, stuff like that. And then, um, the guy that taught the class was a Fullerton alumni and had a big uh, uh studio up in hollywood and then he hired me right out of class so i went straight from school up to hollywood and i was just like holy crap i'm from a small town i mean it was a shithole up there homeless people and drugs and stuff like that everywhere but i just thought it was the coolest thing in the world that i made it to ho hollywood that just like yeah. worked out didn't it <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah it wasn't too bad <laughs> Yeah, he was telling us about all the money we could make, which was sounded good to me. But then when I got there, <laughs> I was making like 11 bucks an hour. And I'm like, <laughs> but damn, it's cool. Yeah, <laughs> here isn't really matching up to what he was telling me. What does that look like? You're, you're, you, you get the job, right? You go to Hollywood. You know, he's a design studio and he's predominantly, like you said, movie posters. Um, obviously, at, what, year is, what year is this? What year did you graduate college? I graduated uh, 95. Okay. And so this is still, I mean, big time print is king. Um, how does that process work on, hey, these are the projects that we're, you know, we've got X amount of projects, start throwing stuff against the wall. And then we get, you know, people to decide who's going to make the pitch or I want to know like what the first week is, like what the first year. I'm interested in knowing like the behind the scenes of how that actually works. You don't just go in and sit down and be like, I'm going to draw a movie poster. Right. Like you got to have some like, info yeah so um i know when i first started i think the very first comp i built was for um an arnold schwarzenegger movie called eraser that was the first one i worked on and um the big difference is like in college you could be one of the best in college and then you get there and you're not <laughs> you're not the best <laughs> of you're like the all of them so uh, so normally when we get a poster, we'll read the script, uh, we'll come up with, uh, concepts for it. Uh, we have a kickoff meeting to say, Hey, we want this. They don't want that. Um, and we'll do like, uh, just thumbnail sketches and then those will go to a sketch artist and the presentation goes to the client. And basically the hopes are to get a photo shoot with the talent. Otherwise we just get to use like unit photography that they have a photographer shoot, uh, during filming. 
how many people are on that team for that pitch or comp? Uh, it really depends, but um, I know the first company I was with, there was maybe five art directors and then two finishers that could help, you know, retouch a little bit of stuff. But we were doing, I mean, I, I'd be surprised if any given post, any given movie, we did less than 500 posters for before they picked one. Really? And it would be yeah. like, oh, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, and we love it. Can you have them like this, though? And you're like, well, we don't have that photo. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We need that photo to do that or they, you know, and back then it was more, there was a lot of um, montages where they were trying to tell the whole story, where if you look at any church stuff, I like to eliminate as much information that I don't need and then just have the idea left. That's, that's my goal. And I think it makes for a, a better poster. I can do the big, you know, the big ass card with everything going everywhere, but there's other people that are so much better than it than I am, but I'd just rather let them do it. The, um, you said, you know, they, they let you know what they want and what they don't want. How many times when they're talking about what they don't want, is that, the, that well, that's the <laughs> thing like it sticks in your head. It's like the Austin Powers thing. Like don't talk about his mole. Like that's, <laughs> that's all you want to That's all you want to talk about. Right? As soon as you tell me I can't do something like, well, shit. And now I, <laughs> what you told me I can't do actually would work really good. Like that's what we should do. Well, back then it was like, uh, like it was still big heads in the sky with a little scene on the bottom and then a logo and the billing at the base. Like that's kind of what it was, um, but for the most part, not, not for everything. And they would be like, we don't want two heads in the sky. And so we had this running joke. It was like the smaller the person, the bigger the movie. I mean, if you can get a little guy in there, I mean, with a big <laughs> guy, like it just looks, it's got more scope. It looks epic or whatever. But um, yeah, there's so many times, usually the first thing they say is we don't want this. Um, I posted up a picture on my Instagram the other day. I just started posting posters. I, I, uh, I saw the, the alpha dog. For one. a couple of people's re requests. Which one was that? The, the alpha the dog, dog one that you posted? Yeah, that was the one. And like immediately they're like, absolutely not hung it on our wall. And then when the director saw it, he's like, I want that. I mean, we were 300, 400 posters in. Damn. Tell, oh, like, that. tell everybody that maybe did, haven't read the post, tell like a little bit longer version of the story mm -hmm. of what happened with that one. Yeah. So we got this a job for uh, Alpha Dog and it's a, it's a dark movie about a kidnapped boy. And I think it was one of the first that maybe Justin Timberlake was in and they it's a good, it was a good movie. Yeah. And, but it, it got dark and they specifically said, you know, don't show the kid and don't show duct tape, uh, and I decided to show the kid with duct tape on his mouth to both and of things. put all the type <laughs> on it. And then uh, they, we agreed to send it to the client, like just knowing that they probably weren't going to approve it. And she loved it enough to hang it above her desk. But that was as far as it went. And then we just kept doing revisions, revisions, new revisions. And then uh, the director came in for a meeting to see, you know, 10 posters or 12 posters or something like that and didn't like any of them. And he looks above her desk and he's like, I want that. And that was the poster. And it's happened tons of times. How, how did that go over in the office where now that you've basically been, uh, you've, you've had a positive outcome on absolutely not following the rules. <laughs> I know how that would have gone over with you. It was, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, as long as like, if, if, if there's an idea behind it, uh, the bosses at any of the companies I work for would let you fight for it to get it to the client, even if it gets shit on or whatever. And I know there was a couple of times we did it. I can't, I can't remember which company, but, um, you send it to the client and if they were like, no, we said, don't do that. They'll send it back. Like, the, like maybe the, um, maybe the client will sign it and send it back and they'll just say, we're not paying for this one. So, but for the most part, I mean, I just do whatever I want. And if they like it, they'll show the client. If they don't like it, they don't show the client. Like it says, not I just do what I do. Is there a bonus structure if you get selected out of all the artists, if your poster is the one or no. just bragging? Uh, that, or they try to get, like, you don't get any credit, like in the billing, there's no credit. We, we don't get credit for anything, but, uh, I know BLT, when I work for BLT, um, 
they they would try to get you a ticket to the premiere, which was usually down the street. If it wasn't at Man's Chinese Theater in Hollywood, uh, it was at the Arc Light, which is walking distance from where we were at. So that was always cool. Um, I tried a lot of times uh, going to photo shoots uh, where you could shoot those stars. I mean, you don't actually take the photos, but you work with you know, the client and you try to get the sketches on the film. And uh, a lot of times you don't get to talk to the talent or talk much to the talent because they have a rapport with the photographer already or something like that. But they never really let me do that too much. Um, although I did go to um, the photo shoot for Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> pretty cool uh, you know and ben was there and owen and vince uh carmen electra and um snoop dogs there and he's huggy bear and um there's a bunch of people which is why the boss invited me and i was talking to snoop and i said do you need any props do you need a gun do you need a whatever and he's like snoop don't need no guns that night <laughs> he gets busted outside the Oscars in like an armored car full of weaponry. <laughs> <laughs> and it was right after us. Uh, you don't need no guns, which was pretty funny. Uh, Snoop. Turns out, mm, he had, yeah. he, 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 didn't need any, he didn't need any more. That's what he yeah. meant. He didn't need yeah. any more. <laughs> He had enough. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then um, so the, the they did get me with that poster. They did get me into the premiere, but uh, they didn't really have a ticket for me. So they gave <laughs> me, I was Todd Phillips, who was the director who went on to do the Joker. Um, I was technically his plus one. That's cool. Just, just to get in. Yeah. And it was so long ago. I mean, he wouldn't remember me from a hole in the ground. But I mean, I certainly appreciate the boss's you know, offering me a ticket. So how has today different than, I mean, obviously a lot of reasons, 95, but as the transition, you've got AI coming in, you've got way less print media and posters and so much more digital and I mean, different mediums and like, what are, how is it better now? I mean, delve into that a little bit on things that are, you know, better, worse, different. Well, I think the students have more technique than I knew. Like uh, for us, it was all about what's the big idea and I, can you read it within three seconds if you're passing by it on a billboard or whatever, where now the kids are like, they just have so many awesome techniques that they could do, but they don't know how to think yet and they will. So now the difference is, is um, with uh, some of the advancements like in Photoshop and layers and layer masks and stuff like that, that, um, it's more faster. How many can you do and how fast can we have it? And you're like, well, do you want good or do you want now? You can't have both. And they're like, no, we'll take both. And you're just like, all right, you're the boss. <laughs> so you do both. That's a big one. AI is, is coming really fast. Uh, we're not allowed to really use it yet for posters um, because we can't finish it high enough resolution. Um, it's going to change, but we're allowed to use it when like if we come up with sketches that uh, we usually attach like a little pair or a sentence or two that says this is the s simplified concept. This is what it is. And then um, uh, we're, uh, we'll attach scrap to it so we could say, oh, we want this color palette or this kind of contrast or whatever. And uh, that's the only thing we're allowed to use AI. And I'm dragging my feet the whole time. I'm like, old man, new traits, no yeah. light. <laughs> this, shit's, <laughs> this shit's never going to catch on. Yeah. Yeah. What? But man, it's coming kind of fast. <laughs> It really is. Yeah, is almost, it, almost is, like it's self-aware. Is it concerning? <laughs> is it concerning to you, somebody in a creative position? Like, what the future looks like for that? Because it, like you said, it's coming fast. And we we tinker with it. And even me, I'm like the least tech savvy guy there is. And I've tinkered with it. And you're like, holy shit, you can do yeah, some, it, you can do some crazy. stuff with it. And it's only been out. I don't even think it's been out for 16 months now. Right. I mean, for stuff i know so my best friend her name's sarah she lives up in portland so i mean she'll probably come up more than once she's younger than me so she'll she's definitely more worried about it than i am i feel like i might be able to be a consultant or i might be able to do this or i might be able to do that as i'm you know i'm not the young cool hip kid anymore so it'll affect her more than me but yeah i'm trying to figure out like where i'm gonna fit 
especially after last year. I mean, I didn't work for seven months because of the actor strike. Most people don't realize that, but as a freelancer, the the companies, you know, they're they're keeping their staff on staff, and I you, you can't blame them for it. But there was a good six or seven months in there when wow. I wasn't doing it. Wow, crazy times. Yeah, you don't think about how broad the like, actor, yeah, oh, actor yeah. strike hits. How yeah. many people are it in the industry? Down. Yeah, what are those fuckers striking about? I mean, what the fuck? <laughs> a lot of it is like <laughs> streaming. What is it? Streaming was a, a lot of it because they weren't getting, you know, residuals because every time you're on a commercial, you get a few cents or whatever your deal is. But on Netflix or Hulu or Roku or whatever it is, like they don't have the same the same thing. It's like one fee. So I know that had a lot to do with it, but there's another strike that's supposed to, you know, like in the next couple of months might come up with like grips and cameraman and stuff like that. So who knows where that'll be. I mean, that I could see, right? They're probably like. Underpaid. Uh, underpaid. Or uh, work. Yeah. Hours, yeah. Right. Or you got, I mean, yeah, some of those dudes. I mean, I've always damn. wondered that on the on the streaming service side of things on how, like, you get a huge blockbuster that comes out, um, and it's in the theater for, like, 12 days. Mm-hmm. And then it's streaming. You know, and I don't, you know, there's some stuff that you would, you would like that you still would go sit down, pay your ticket, and want to see on the big screen for the yeah. experience and stuff like that. But the overwhelming majority of stuff, you're just like, oh, it's going to be streaming in, in a, a week, fucking week or two. In a week. You know? yeah. And then on the backside, how does that affect, like, I guess, you know, to your point, that's kind of why they were striking. There's so much that we don't know. We're not in that world at all. But you've always wondered if, like, traditionally, actor, everything trickles down. You get paid X amount. You know, the movie's going to do X amount. It's going to be in the theater. I mean, remember back, like, it wasn't, Five, six, seven years ago, movies were in the theaters for like three it was, months. It was yeah, for a year later. I finally made it to Blockbuster. Yeah, yeah, it was forever to wait for that to hit like VHS. Yeah. It was, a year, it was probably a year, wasn't it? Yeah. Like close to it. Now you're going way, way back to right. VHS stuff. But, but you're yes. standing in line at Blockbuster to see if somebody returned as oh, you grab even, another return I mean, even thing. like they had the, the whole like Redbox thing, you know, you used to go and, yeah. you know, get a DVD and stuff like that. And you would have to wait like yeah. months. Yeah. Well, then there, when DVDs finally hit, then there was, there was always somebody that had an in that would get you like a burned copy of like a pre-release, you know, uh, there's somebody in French. Yeah. There was like, I think Brad or cousin (laughs) would have that. They'd have like, man, this was just out in theaters, but like two weeks later. I know we're going off on a complete (laughs) tangent. (laughs) But on Netflix thing, nobody ever talks about what Netflix used to be, right? Do you realize they, they like... Who would start a business to be like, tell us what you want, we'll mail you the DVD, right? Because the, the, especially coming, like, they came in to a marketplace where everybody was still so used to that instant gratification. You either went to the movie theater or you went to the blockbuster, right? And you got that movie to watch that night. You never planned. How many times did we ever go get VHS that you planned it at the beginning of the week what movie you were going to go get? You didn't. You'd go to the Blockbuster. You would see what was I think it was available. just Blockbuster, dude. The, the Blockbuster. Is, <laughs> yeah, okay, fuck you. <laughs> like my go mom. To, I like my mom. My oh, it, seven this year old be, mom. This is before the internet, okay. right? Yeah. So, but you go to Blockbuster, you would see what was available because they only have like three copies of it. If yeah. it was something hot, you might not get it. So you'd have to pick something else and you pick that for that night. Well, then, then quickly after that, Netflix comes around and is like, hey, you decide what you want to watch, and then in a couple of days, it'll show up in the mail. Yeah. And you can watch it. Just put it back in the mail and send it back. It's too much and planning. And then it was, it was like a light switch. They were like, oh, forget that. We're, we're going to create the best content just about that there is out there. That's wild. Fucking wild. It, it advanced pretty quickly. Extremely quickly. Yeah. It's just, it's nuts for, from a business model, like this is what we're going to do. People call, I mean, people paid for that subscription. They got DVDs in the fucking mail and yeah. then overnight they're like the powerhouse. Making wild. content. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what is your, and we're going to get into car shit here in just a second. We're going to yeah, get off like, Hollywood let's stuff. Let's quit talking about he's this. Like, right? I I we're really talking care. about cars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is your, your freelance? You talked about freelance. What does your day look like, non-car related, on the creative side of things? And are you 
even when you were working at the other design houses, were you working on multiple projects at one time? How do you try to put those books back on the shelf in your mind at night when you've got so, so many different directions and the creative process itself? I'm, I'm interested in that, like, from the the concept just a day like, in the life yeah day in the life of like when when from the the new project that's coming in is like don't do this we really want this are you are you copy and pasting from some other stuff that you know that's worked are you you do you sit down in like your sleep pod and you start seeing things in the sky and like i think this is going to work or or you just throw a shit ton of stuff out there and see what they like uh well i mean the company as a whole will throw a ton of stuff out there and see what they like um I usually start with a sketch um, and almost ever, almost never work on one project at a time. There's, there's probably, I'd say at any given time, like a half a dozen projects or whatever. And it's going to be all, uh, you know, your priorities are based on um, what days we're going to have a crit or um, when it goes out to the client or something like that. Um, I go through the photography. I mean, I'll read the script. I go through the photography and I'll make selects of my favorite stuff and then, then go from there. Is your ADD self-diagnosed or was it clinically diagnosed? (laughs) (laughs) The funny thing is, is a long time ago, uh, I went to a psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever. And, um, she, right off the bat, she was just like, well, aside from your ADD, what else do you have? And I <laughs> called my mom that night. And I'm like, this bitch <laughs> and my, or, no, OCD. And my mom was like, you didn't know that? I was like the only person that didn't know. <laughs> she fucking told me, mom. <laughs> I know. Nobody told me. I just thought that was normal, you know, like opening doors to 90 degrees and windows and, you know, just certain amount of stuff because it looks better. It's- yeah, everybody does that, right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't wash my hands like 14 times or anything like that, but no. it's all, it's all visual. It's all like doors and windows and everything on the wall has got to be straight. And I mean, yeah. I go to other people's houses and straighten pictures on walls and that is tough. So it, it's, we can go to your house and just kind of start moving shit just, just to fuck oh, with oh, you. Like Sarah did. Sarah does all the time. She had this, it's like blocks and they're in a grid. There's like 12 of them. And then she took like one from the top and put it in the middle. And she just waits to see how long I'm going to. Like one, of your, one of your drawers is open in the back corner over your shoulder. Hey, you know, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, <laughs> I wanted to turn around so bad. <laughs> that is a curse. I mean, doing what, what we do, I mean, what we've done for years, you, you have a certain level of OCD and you'll find yourself sitting there like talking to people. And just like Phil said, you're looking over somebody's shoulder and just like staring at like a picture that you're like, that's an eighth of an inch, a fucking eighth of an inch crooked. Yeah. Right. Like, what is the matter? Are you people yeah. savages? Kids run wild right. and destroy your home. Yeah. yeah you just got to like, turn on it off. Horror movie, and then we'll go right into a comedy, and then like a romantic comedy, and then an animated something. <laughs> it's crazy just to have to turn it off and back on. So it's should be no surprises. I'm a freaking wreck. Yeah, I can't. I can't even imagine. Especially like you said, you couple in the OCD thing, and the OCD thing can be all different types of stuff. It could be odds. It could be evens. It, like you said, it could be. That's that's a broad thing, and where you were talking about straightness and squareness, I think that a lot of that probably has to do with symmetry. So symmetry is probably a very big thing in your head that, and there's sometimes in design that symmetry air quotes or whatever can also be achieved in asymmetry, right? In yeah. what you're yeah. doing. Um, and that's got to, fuck, that's got to fuck with your head like big time on, you know, working in thirds and stuff like that. And what, what the, the viewer is seeing or the person viewing this design is seeing like an offset and asymmetry. But in your mind, when you designed it, you're like, you're not seeing the other part that you don't see. Like I designed this symmetry, but we just, we snapshot at this part, but that, that solves and satiates your mind to get it off to the thing. And that's, that's a personal struggle that but nobody the, ever gives a fuck about it. At, at, <laughs> at the same time, yeah, you they, can be, they just assume that there's like, uh, like for um, Alpha Dog being as you showed it, like uh, people thought that you know maybe that was a photo in the unit photography. Somebody put some type on, it and that was it. And it's just like, oh, I wish it was that easy. <laughs> yeah. I wish it was that easy. Yeah, it could still be like that. You're, you you might be perfectly cutting that into a third, 
and your OCD focused on that. Like it's off center, it's asymmetrical. Yeah. But yeah, but there's still perfect symmetry. What, what we're that. seeing yeah. is, yeah, it's so wild when you get into the, like, yeah, you said the OCD part and the design and, and the. You ever open Little Mike's toolbox? Yes. Yeah, he's got him. He's got a nice touch of those. Oh, like fucking so it's almost like if you it, like if you have the laser cut foam yes wherever but it's but not it's but that's no, not there. no foam there. Yeah, it's everything just is laid just there flawlessly yeah. laid it's out. nested sometimes Perfect. i want to just like slam a door <laughs> just, <real quick>. just, <laughs> so throughout all of this right you 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 came from obviously we touched on the car <clears throat> background you touched on you know your entire family being at the drag strip being all this stuff you go you're in hollywood you've got the job you're doing design you're doing this stuff where does church equipped come? Then we'll get into the Van Gogh. Then we'll get into stuff like that. But like, you've obviously the bug for the car shit never goes away, right? You're doing this, yeah. you're doing design, design's still cool. You're still loving it. You're doing all that, but you've got the car bug thing. So what's the first time is it you make a little bit of money or are you doing that or, or you just got to satiate that, that drive? Well, when I was still in college, I started doing uh, renderings for uh, race cars. Oh, so, really? like Jerry Darian had a you know an alcohol dragster. Um, he, I mean, he was always around. But uh, you know, I did like one for him, and then um, the last one I did, which is one of the bigger ones, is uh, Hillary Will. Remember her? She had a, she drove a top fuel car for Coletta, and they were looking for sponsorship, so they asked me to do a design for that, and she was. Uh, I guess that, that had to be, I had just started church because she put the church stickers like right next to her on the cowl. Oh and yeah. I remember that. Yeah. They always focused on her face. Cause like you never had woman top fuel or hardly had any woman top fuel driver. So they focused on her eye and there'd always be like a church sticker there. And then they called me and they're like, you know, that placement's like worth $25,000. And I'm like, no, not for me. <laughs> I don't know. I don't it's, have it. It's already so. there. <laughs> Is that peeled off? I don't care. Yeah. yeah. So, um, but when I was at my, I mean, I was always into uh, cars. So I'd go to like Paso Robles and stuff like that. A bunch of car shows, a bunch of drag races. And then uh, my second job, which is probably late nineties, super early two thousands. Um, uh, I actually, uh, we'd have a group of friends that would drive up to Paso Robles. And um, one of the years there is when I went through the, um, like the all the artists hanging out and stuff like that because yeah. I like art and um, I didn't buy anything. I didn't buy a shirt. I didn't buy a magazine, a book. I didn't buy anything. And on my way home, I was just like, I'll just I'll just make something I I would buy. And that was the start of church. So I did. Um, I think I did eight shirts right off the bat, just so it didn't look like I was a knucklehead in my garage making these shirts. And then I was like, well, how am I going to sell these? So. I'm like, I'm gonna make a magazine and I'm gonna run ads for my own shirts in my own magazine. And I'm like, well, how am I gonna sell a magazine? I better put up a website. I mean, it was just like Snow comedy of errors, but. Was that first drop, was that one, was the the quarter panel and the uh, wheel opening with the slammed Astro Supreme, was that one of the first drop? Yeah, that was one of the first eight, yeah. I've got, I've got like three of the first eight. Which yeah. is even crazier. So, so we'll get into this too. Thank you for, thank you very much for sending <clears throat> all of the magazines. And I noticed that we've got four through 10. I personally at home have one, two, and three. So we have the entire, well, we have oh, the yeah. entire set now is completed. While we're on the subject of ADD, I just couldn't help <laughs> myself, but I keep staring at these ahead of yeah, I know. I see. Distracted. <laughs> you to look I went at. for the one with the shiny colors. So, so those, you should see, like, when I lay out one of those magazines, I do spreads. Like, I, I know going through my photos, this is a left page, this is a right page, or this is a double page or whatever. And then I have to um, figure out which one goes next to another one. So, like, uh, it'll be something big next to something small because you don't want your – I don't want your focus to – I don't want you to – to be distracted by the two images. I want you to be able to see the two. So there'll be a light and a dark or a big and a small. And then, uh, are you, you know, when you're doing le left and right, are you, I'm, I'm going through here now that you said that you're, you're directionally pointing towards the spine. Yeah. 
to gotcha. keep your eye on the page so your eye doesn't go off the page. So most of the cars are pointing in, not always, but most of them are pointing in. And then every once in a while, I'll throw in an oddball and like a seam of a car will, will on one page, will do, uh, will like connect to another page seamlessly, even though they're two totally different images, there'll be a line or something that connects or a color or something like that. The, That's uh, badass. I love the, the text yeah, oh, that is cool. Stuart Warner. And there's so it's it's so creative on some of the stuff too. And it's just like a there's a subtle knot like this right here. I'm looking at the Hearst Equip logo, right? And the text on the thing is just hello Linda. Right? It's yeah, they're good, like, dude. Like blues traveler with that that badass what fifty seven yeah. pickup. That's the kind of thing we'd be looking at for days, weeks, trying to like name something that we've been working on for years. Yeah. Well, when you, guess what? Like when you're professional yes, creative, like you're super yeah, creative, right. <laughs> you're so creative, you're professional at it. <laughs> well, I mean, as you, as you may have gathered. Uh, this one says running the, board. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. As, you, as you've gathered, I, I don't do the same things as everybody else. So <laughs> I'm like, I like a book. I, I, I like looking at pictures in magazines. Yeah. There's too many words in there. So if right. I put three, four, like even a hot rodder can understand it. So the funny thing is, is I came out with the very first issue and it was a little smaller. Um, and that was like, it was smaller only because I was using a pocket digital camera. By this point I had given, I would gotten rid of my Minolta and I was only using pocket digital for the last couple issues. I think I've only used my cell phone. Wow. I, I've only used my cell phone for probably the last eight years, 10 years. The first um, episode, first edition, wasn't in a lot of salt flat shots. No, that was number four. Four. Yeah, okay. four. Uh, the first one you have. Belly tank oh, on yeah. the, it has the belly tank on the cover. That has a lot of salt flat cars. Okay. But the first one I took um, to the uh, LA Roadster show, and I saw Steve Coonan, and I'm like, oh, this is my chance. So I go up to him and I said, "You don't know who I am, but I made this little book." And I'm really proud of it. And I wanted you to have one. And he starts flipping through it. And he says, um, what kind of camera do you use? And I pull it out of my pocket. It's a little tiny square camera. And he goes, I don't shoot digital. And he handed the book back to me and walked away. Oh, <laughs> no joke. No joke. So a year later, I do the second issue. And it's my brother's photography. So it's better photography, higher resolution. I could do it on a bigger book. Um, and it's all drag racing stuff. And I'm at, uh, Grand National Roadster show and Steve's there polishing some mag wheels on his roadster. And I'm like, you probably don't remember me, <laughs> but I make this little magazine and, um, I wanted to give you one and he starts flipping through it and he just goes, must be nice not to have to write articles. And I'm like, I just cannot fucking win. <laughs> Who's this? I think he's just Who's totally this awkward. Like, I'm totally cool with them. Like, we're cool with each other. It's not a problem. And they started selling them for a while. They were selling church magazines. But, man, just the first two encounters, I was just, like, defeated. <laughs> Who is this dude? Steve Coonan. Yeah. I'm not. Robert Sherman. Ro Robert Sherman. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great publication. Yeah, and he yeah. knows what he's doing. But I mean, yeah, he's, he's just a little socially it's just the way. It's just the way he is. It's just yeah. the way he is. Yeah, I am too. I'm probably on the spectrum somewhere. I don't really, you know, I've never fully diagnosed, but I'm not surprised if I have Asperger's. <laughs> I'm just, I, I know I'm easily amused, but like, I'm looking at this one, so it's, I'm, we'll put it up on the thing. So, oh, bend the pages. Sick. A little Tommy Ivo action. Yeah. yeah. So the, the uh, badass picture, like that, I want that for, for, for my basement, yeah. right? I want that framed, right? But the, the little caption is Television Thomas. TV Tommy yeah. TV Tommy Ivo. It's just so simple yet so smart, so creative. So uh, I remember there was one uh man, what was it? I can't remember what what the photo was, but um I would always give, you know, obviously I gave them to my parents or my brothers and stuff like that. And my mom didn't know what one of the the captions was, and it was like really a dirty one. I mean, it was like <laughs> a position or something. I'm like, man, why is she asking about that one? I, didn't think, oh, I think it was a rusty trombone. <laughs> yeah. What's a rusty it, trombone? There, there was, it was like a, it was like, um, it was like a car dealership plaque on it. And it had like a 
trombone or something on it. So yeah. I just put a rusty trombone and she's like, what's rusty trombone? And I'm like, change the subject. Change the subject. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a car Chime thing. Chime in your story. Which? Uh, Bill? Huh? The what's the rusty trombone? What was that? Wasn't that oh, Bill? No, it up? was Dirty Sanchez. Oh, yeah. We had a guy, uh, uh, Clean Rock One. He's the... Oh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. He used to uh, live in Elgin, where our shop originally was. And you know, now he's world-famous tattoo artist. Tattoo, yeah. And uh, he had a Model A that he built. It was just a hammered, like, channeled, on-the-ground Model A. And on the back, it said Dirty Sanchez. And it had, like, some little it icon. Had a mustache. Yeah. And uh, the original uh, roadster shop, Bill. dude, Bill, this is an old guy. And he, he thought that it was the bare bones car club. He thought these dudes were so cool. Right. So he was this old guy in his mid sixties and he was always trying to like be hip with them. So he'd be over there and he's like, you know, I, I like that car, but what's a dirty Sanchez. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like trying to tell your grandpa. So clean. I don't think he ever yeah. Yeah. said anything, but yeah. it's, <laughs> <laughs> <It's kinda> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the rusty trombone, the dirty Sanchez. Oh, we we get into uh, all kinds of good, all kinds There's of good. There's a great name. Billy Steele had that dirty Ernie bike. Yeah, that was cool. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Steele reference. Uh, the Model A is in here. Oh, is there? Yeah, Where I was at? just. Uh, I don't know which one I was. I was just going through it. The Model A, the brown and black. Which one I was looking at? I think it might have been this one. What did he call that? That's a dirty something. A brown. flying. A. No, what the no. hell did he call that? F and uh, A. F and A. Yeah, F-N-A. that's a good name. Yeah. Yeah, on the very first issue, there's a picture of my friend Chevy, and it took him a long time to finish it, and uh, he painted it brown. It's got, like, candy gold roof and stuff like that, and he calls it El Caca. <laughs> that's, but it's pretty solid. That's Spanish for... Always- you're always the Spanish translator. That's only if you have L yeah. and then a normal name. Like that's it. Exactly. it was like no blade. Blade. So I just, I just sent you the, the boat you name. Say the no blade. That's the poop. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. I've always yeah. admired people. Like that's one thing Jesse James has got. Like just on lockdown, he can name is the ability mm-hmm. to name shit yeah. and make it sound just so badass. Well, that's what I was going to ask Kobe when I got he, the car names coming. Yeah, you got some car names. Oh yeah, I got a list of them coming, and I, I mean I don't have the money to build them, but I got the the names of them. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. You, you talked about you got to do some, you were doing some renderings and stuff in the early days. Did you get to name any drag cars? No. Shit. No, I didn't get to name any. So then you, are you, can we discuss this right now that in the future, naming cars is probably the most difficult thing it's hard. That, that we do. We can build, <laughs> we can engineer a complete frame and suspension from scratch, build an entire car, finish it, make it perform, and then trying to name it is quite possibly one of the most difficult things we I th- can do. I think that it's because we overanalyze it. Generally, whatever the first thing that comes out is the one we end up coming yeah. back to. But we all sit there, and it could be hours. Yeah. Hours upon hours going back well, and forth. Want their cars to be, like, tough, though, or, like, a, a tough name, and I just, I mean, I go goofy or whatever. It doesn't have to really match. I mean, Van Gogh was a no-brainer. Right. Yeah, it's a good one. Well, we're, yeah, d- Perfect segue into Van Gogh. Love it. Love that fan, Wait, dude. Take us through that. When, I mean, obviously you had the idea. Take us through figuring out how to build it while you're working, doing all this kind of stuff. I want to I hear that story. I didn't realize how much thought I had given it to it until um, I was at a drag race in Vegas. And uh, this was probably 2008. And one of, uh, sitting in the crowd with one of my friends uh, from Vegas. And he's like, what's next? And I'm like, actually, I want to do a van. And he was like, a van? You got to be kidding me. And I'm like, no, I go, I want to paint it like Watson style, but really earthy tones. Um, I want it subtle enough paint so you could see the body mods Or If you go crazy paint, you can't really see them. Um, I'm like, I want to get rid of the hinges. I want to get rid of the body line. I want to move the gas access to the back of the car. I want to, um, you know, call it Van Gogh. Uh, I want to have shelves in it and that there's rods on the headliner so I could hang my shirt. So it basically be something I could sell out of. And he started thinking about it and he goes, I have a 63 Econoline van in my yard. It's like, it doesn't run. There's dents on all four corners, but there's no rust. He goes, if you do what you say you're going to do, come get it and you can have it. And that became Van Gogh. 
And he's been my biggest supporter ever since. Did you realize how big of a deal it was going to be when you said to remove the hinges to actually remove the hinges? <laughs> no. <laughs> the first shot didn't, couldn't do it. Like they should have done it when mm. everything was out of the car. And then once the suspension was in and they, there's no, there's no room up there for your hands. So yeah. no, but I called, I mean, when I came home, I called uh, one of my friends that had a shop and I was just like, can you get one of these on the ground? I had only seen one photo of a lower Econoline. line. It was on a trailer. It was pale yellow. I wish I knew the guy's name. So he could get some kind of credit. Um, it was on like 20 inch five spokes and they just, whatever you channel body drop, whatever. I mean, it's a unibody, but you could see that it wasn't drivable because the, the steering wheel was like up in your throat. So I don't know if that one was ever finished, but that's the first one I saw. And then um, a guy named E-Dog out here, he's a custom painter. He had, um, he had one, he put it on bags, but it wasn't on the ground, but it was, uh, he did stuff to like cheat how low it was. Like he put a heavier bumper under the front of the car and side pipes and stuff like that. So he yeah. could get it low. The illusion of it that's sitting low. Yeah, it just looked lower than it actually was. But we were the first to have an actual running, driving, slammed van. And if we were to do it again, uh, one of your chassis would have been hugely helpful. <laughs> yeah. We were complete guinea pigs. We had no idea what we were doing. And you lose, you have to raise the fender wells like four or five inches, and then you lose your headroom. So you got to do a thin seat. I mean, it was just one thing after another. Yeah, they're Steering, tr- there's no room up there. They are tricky, man. I mean, I l- absolutely love that van. Me and Phil have a 66 Econo line that it's it's a, a, another stalled project of ours but i don't know if it was never started project yeah, it was started it's all body worked and like you know, it was it fabbed was, a cross member for it and stuff it but was I, a little straighter yeah <laughs> yeah some things happened along the way but <laughs> but i know all the dude the vans are such a challenge the wheel <clears> openings <throat> and then that little dog leg in the door yeah. becomes such yeah. a challenge well, we, to get uh, you could put like a roller skate tire like a caster that's on the front of it yeah. and get it low, but to get just a proper wheel and tire that fills the wheel opening, get it to sit low, get it to turn and be able to sit in it. It's almost, yeah. it's, it, it's your classic, like I want a 1071 blower and I, I want go. the car to sit. I want a three inch rocker height and I want it under the hood. That's what it I was going to go with. It can't be done, but you, but you did it. I mean, it, we deal with customers all the time, especially on Mopar shit, right? You get like a charger, right? Or a Cuda and you're like, I want three inch rocker height. We're running a Elephant motor, right? I don't want to run a cow hood, right? And I want to run, you know, a 29 inch overall diameter front tire. You know, it's that, but then put you, put a a seat and a passenger on top of those tires, right? Yeah. And then a roof height over that. Then nobody thinks about on the van side of things is all that shit. Now you're still sitting on top of it. Yeah. You're sitting on top of the tire. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, and then on the it was like when you like when you raise the inner fender wells, the the doors hug so much that you have to cut that out of the door. So that now my windows don't go all the way down. Yep, it's actually a good height to rest my arm, but I mean that wasn't the intention. <laughs> and I was going to do uh, one piece glass in it, and then um, I had called Cole Foster. He was doing a truck for somebody like stock height, but he was doing a truck, and he's like, "Do not." He's like, "It will not fit if you have to cut out that window. Otherwise, we would have just." I had no glass in it, no side glass, I guess. So, yeah, they're rad. We've done now, uh, I think, three or four chassis for them. We haven't <clears throat> had the ability to complete a car. We've done them just for customers, but we've done some really neat stuff. There's a Chevy, what was that, 64 Chevy? Yeah. With the, uh, what the hell is that motor? A turbo little uh, turbo four cylinder. Yeah. That Ecotech, or is it Ford's the Ecotech? Yeah. No, it was it's Chevy's Eco- Ecotech, yeah. EcoBoost. That is Ford. a rad, rad truck. I don't know where it ever went from there. Boris has got one. Yeah, Boris has got the Econoline pickup that was all patinaed and laid rocker on airbags. Yeah, I want to see the one that's, uh, was it Squeaks is doing? That uh, It's a truck, but Jimmy Smith helped design it. It's got a spoiler built into the roof. It has oh, a... Yeah, I've seen that one at a shop. fuel engine in the back. It's center steer with a full yeah. cage. Yeah. It's painted it's as cool. far as I've heard, but I haven't seen it. I, I thought s- it was... Cool. I saw it in bare metal years ago, uh, a few years ago at his open house for the Scottsdale show. I think yeah, it's cool. Yeah, at Scottsdale this year, or last year, he showed a couple of people, but um, I mean, I wasn't there, but... Uh, or I wasn't at the open house, so I know it's painted. I was hoping to see the Grand Nationals, but it didn't happen. 
I'd say, I, I think that, I don't know if that's the first, it may be the second Cole Foster reference in three seasons on this thing. Cole Fo- Salinas yeah. boys, man. Is he still building bikes? He's still building whatever comes to the shop. He was just doing a LaSalle, uh, but I think he's working on bikes and stuff I wonder, like that. I wonder what a I wonder what a Cole Foster bike would cost. Yeah, he's got, style. He's got some good I, style. I would, I would like. He's kept a low profile. I'd like to own a Cole years. Foster bike. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's got the look, man. Definitely got the look. Yeah. It's, I, I want that shit. To, I, maybe we're getting older. We all get more nostalgic, and we always think back about the days, right? Back in the day. And it's been a quote, you know, used different t- different ways. I wish we could realize, wish we could have known that the, we were having the time of our lives when we were having yeah. the time of our lives, you know? A hundred percent. Yeah. I mean, I think about that all the time. I think about it, especially with the era that we grew up, you know, we're all like nineties kids and we grew up in the absolute best music era, probably in his, like grunge fucking music with some of the most rad music ever and sitting around being like, there's nothing to fucking listen to. This sucks. Like, yeah. Rolling Stones are cool. I like the Beatles, but I wish somebody would play some decent fucking music. The same thing back then. I mean, we weren't sitting around living in the moment, you know, thinking about how awesome this is. You look back at it now. Oh, I guarantee like, you. Hell yeah, this I is guarantee cool. you. In in ninety nine, when Phil was rolling around in the SS, he wasn't. Thinking, he knew he was cool. Yeah. He knew he, 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 knew he was cool. <laughs> but little he wasn't biscuit blasting. He wasn't you know, thinking. Shit. He wasn't thinking <laughs> twenty plus years from now that guy he's listening to is getting raided by the. You know, Homeland Security. Oh, he did. Yeah. <laughs> did, did, did he? And now all that music is on the classic station now. Like, yeah. if you ever yeah. old, I was just like, man, I think I was a junior, maybe end of my junior year when the Appetite for Destruction came out. <laughs> and I was like, man, it's on all the classic stations. Yeah. Like, and now kid, you've got like 10 year old kids wearing Nirvana t shirts that they don't even yeah. know what the hell it is. But it's, it's crazy. I mean, it's, it's, it's great because some. You do have that recycling, right, of old songs and new artists doing them, and then people start doing a little research and they find the old shit. I remember my daughter uh, a couple years ago when she was still home before she went to college. The uh, like, maybe it was the Miley Cyrus cover. Or it was a uh, was it a Pink Floyd song or a Led Zeppelin or whatever cover she did or whatever. She was like, "Oh my gosh, you're never gonna believe this new song." And I was like, "That's not a new song. It's a cover." Yeah. Like here, listen to the listen to the original, and then that took her down that path where she's like, Oh wow, this is cool. You know? And it, it, every, I mean, every generation has got that, but there is a resurgence of the retro, you know, and they're, so they're going back to the old shit sure. stuff, but. And old Cole Foster took us down quite the rabbit hole here. <laughs> he did. Yeah. yeah. He started, <laughs> that's what, that, that's what a discussion will do. <laughs> that's it, dude. Dude, what, on the van, let's get back to the yeah. van. What did you, what'd you do for the front suspension on that? How did you, Mustang too? Mustang too? Yeah, it was, we had to get rid of the straight axle. I mean, it, there's just going to be bump steer and stuff like that. So, yeah, we put a Mustang 2 in it. And how did you connect yeah. to the rack? Yeah. Did you just roll it back? or? Yeah, and then they uh, they built like a – oh, the, for steering? Yeah. For steering, that was that. that's like the biggest thing. And we found a company called Steer Clear, and sure. uh, we ended up using them. And it's like a big oval, and it's all chain-driven and stuff like that, and it leaves us yep. room. That's that's what we use. I know there's another one that uh, other people use. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but yeah, Steer Clear is the way to go. Steer Clear is what we used, yeah. And there's an Isuzu box, too, that reverses it. Yeah, it's it's a reverser. Yeah, I think that's the other one. Yeah, such a rad truck, though. It's one of the few things, like, there's only X amount of vehicles that, like, have stayed with me over the years. Like, if I look back over the past 10, 15 years that are, like, the iconic ones that I'll just always remember, that's one of them. I mean, that that van, I'm a van guy. I like vans a lot. And that was, part of it, I think, was, I don't know, it, it was, like, enabled me, made me think, I'm like, all right, I'm not the only dude stupid enough to possibly spend a lot of money on a van. <laughs> <laughs> I, did, uh, I did tell most of my friends that I was doing it. I mean, a couple of them knew, but I kept it under wrap because I figured I'd get lambasted for doing a van. And really? I was still apologizing to people for doing it because now there's way more vans than ever. And I can't, I can't even tell you how many people, how do I do it? Like, where, yeah. where do I start? Who do I do this? Like, I mean, People are still interested in it. And I'm like, don't slam. Yeah. <laughs> just don't, just rake it. It's cool with a rake. Yeah. Yeah. It's a huge rake. <laughs> just drive you'd, it. You'd be surprised yeah. that we've got one right now that we're doing a chassis for, uh, one of our RS4 four-wheel drive chassis. And it's, uh, what is that, a 69 Econoline? 
It's the, when they change yeah. the body style. Yeah. So late sixties, uh, very early seventies. Yeah, sh- uh, little shorty, shorty wheelbase, and it is dude. It is so badass. It's probably got thirty threes on it, but it even that is a challenge. Like all of our standard stuff, that was that's probably yeah. the most challenging four wheel drive solid axle that we've done. It's just like where do you put a sway bar? How do you connect the steering? Where does the steering box go? It, Vans are a, a bastard radiator motor packaging. And then it went from like, it's going to be an LS to, well, let's make it a Godzilla because it's a Ford. Well, that's not going to fit. So vans are tough. I mean, shit, Goolsby did a badass. Yeah. yeah. Have, you seen it? Have you seen Van Gogh in person? Uh, I saw it. I've not, I saw it at, I think it was the Roadster show. Was it at the Roadster show? Oh, yeah, it was like, here just last year. I totally forgot about that. I think that was the only time I've seen it. It in 2011, but it, uh, they had it for the keep on truck in one. But it's still like every time I walk into the garage, it's I, I keep thinking it's so low. It goes to the top of my head. And I'm like, no, I can see the roof. It goes to the bottom of my chin. Like that just doesn't make sense for a van. Yeah. It just does. It probably looks like a go-kart. Like when you're seeing yeah, it's it. Tiny. Yeah, the proportions have to be just so crazy. Yeah. I will say like we bought, so we bought the 66 Econo line and it must've been in the early two thousands and drove it around a little bit. And the, it did a lot of burnouts, Yeah, a ton of burnout, but the sensation of driving one of those, it's so cool. It's like eerie <clears throat> because you're sitting over the front axle center line yeah. and it's like a before the truck is. Do you drive it much? I haven't lately. I mean, I drove it out to grand nationals one uh, last year and that I haven't driven it too much since then. Um, been touring with the other car. You think that's cool? Yeah. Like driving the van and, oh man, this is awesome. Are we driving getting, is this is a trike. This is going to no. be the this, is worse, this is worse than that. Trike. This is a story that's never been told before. Oh boy. Try <laughs> driving a 95 Dodge 15 passenger full window church van with the name of the church on the side of the van. What's as your daily? Uh, when I was, when I was getting just had gotten my license, right? I learned to drive in that, but then I got my license and that was the church fan. My dad's a preacher, right? That was a church fan. So that was, that was a mode of transportation. Sometimes, you know, being dad, being your dad, being a preacher, you were at the church a lot, right? So there were Sunday nights, you know, there was things going on. It's like, I want to go home. So, oh yeah, go ahead and take, take the church fan. There was Wednesday nights, be late. Hey, go ahead and take the church fan. A 15 passenger, maybe it was more than that. I don't know. 20 passenger, a long ass Dodge van, all windows, and the name of the church on it. There's no weight on the rear end when it's just you driving, <laughs> and there's nobody in the back. Oh boy, that that thing will one wheel peel forever like until you business. just let off the gas, and it it just it just steps out enough. It's it's the perfect setup of length. And then forward motion to where it's always going to just come out a certain amount. Okay. But I mean, you didn't look cool doing it. No, I, it I wouldn't fun. think so. It was yeah. fun <laughs> at 16 never, years old. Never got too hairy. Uh, never no, like went I too far. And never, all of a sudden you're just like, Jesus, take the wheel. No, I never. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then Miranda Lambert comes yeah, on the radio. Yeah. Jesus. 90, 94 miles an hour is the is the cutoff, you know, 98 is on the GM, but 94 is on the, on the Dodge okay. van. It was a, yeah. and, with, and with nobody else in it stopping, if somebody cuts you off, like there's, it's not going to stop very well. No, no, it, it's, those are, there's, yeah. there's something about a van. I spent, something a, about a van. I spent a decent <laughs> amount of time behind the wheel of a van is uh, like 16. My, my dad, school. No, well, yeah, yeah. there's that, but my, my dad had them for uh, the body shop. So they were like mid eighties. I remember they were sh- one of them was a short wheelbase. I want it. Full so. size or Astro van? Yeah, it was full Chevy. Size. Yeah, full size Chevy van and uh, no you know, windows, panel, no, no windows interior. at all. Dude, and it was all like uh, you know that that era that was like Parts runner vans. It was yeah. yeah, 90s and the van was older, so it was all like uh, pastels, like tubular graphics and things on the side. I want those are 350s. Yeah, oh yeah, I want to find that like one of those if one still survived so bad. A Gerber van? Yeah. But I drove it about picking up shit, you know, and it was the, just the whole experience, the slamming of the door, yeah, the, the sensation, tin can, the tin <laughs> yeah. can feel of there's just like, it's just a and, tin can and driver position. I mean, we spend tons of time on the cars we build trying to set up the ergonomics for perfect driver position. I think they knocked it out of the park. With you that. Think so? mean, oh, you sit so good. Like <laughs> it's stadium seating. You're, it's great. Those, the, that, that era van 
That is a great, the, like you said, the short wheelbase, yeah. just the barn doors in the back, slide and side door, no windows. When I was running, when I worked for Napa, delivering parts, right? This was another high school run, right? We had one of those. They had that and then the little square body uh, S10 mm-hmm. for a parts runner, right? And uh, it was a small private store. So we had those two vehicles and I was the only driver and then we'd have another guy rotate through. We we screw we turned took the hat. You remember the hats that would sit on the roof, yeah. the Napa hats. We turned it backwards, right? Because it was cool, right? <laughs> so back, backwards hat. So I'm driving. Top. I'm driving the van one day. We're right in a little downtown area. It's very much like Libertyville, right? If there was right downtown Libertyville, there was a Napa right there on the main yeah. drag. So there was a Napa. We had a little side parking lot, a little main stoplight, small town. So I'm at the stoplight in front of the store, right, in the van. With the hat backwards. No, the van didn't have the hat. Okay. The S10 had the van. Okay, gotcha. So I'm at there. The store's here. You can see through the front showroom the van. I'm at the stop sign. A buddy of mine just comes by me, and he's pulling into the Napa that I'm just leaving from, right? So in my mind, I'm just going to throw it in reverse real quick and back into the parking lot and see him before I leave to make this delivery. I didn't realize that somebody else had pulled behind me, right, to make the stop. Yep. So I throw it in reverse and just, like, just stand on it. <laughs> Pull. I hit this little Civic so hard that, like, the bumper is up in the windshield on top, <laughs> on top of the Civic in the, in the view of the manager of the Napa watching, like, the Napa van up on the back of the car. <laughs> It was, it was horrible. Was that your last day? <laughs> horrible. No, I stayed there for quite a was, while. Was that before or after you went to that special school? This was during the, the during, during this. Yeah. Okay, this gotcha. was while I was at the uh, alternative school. Got it. Yeah. That's when Jesus took the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus took the wheel. In. But those vans, this like, is back the to the van. Yeah. The, it, it's just a, it's a weird sensation. Like you said, sit, the stadium seating, sitting up on front of the wheels and there's just, it feels like nothing behind you, but there's a lot behind you. Tin can. Man, they would do some burnouts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Van Forever. Will, Van will cook some tires. So, went through Van Gogh. Van Gogh was after the uh, wagon? Wagon. The, uh, did, didn't had, you have a 59 wagon? I had a 61 wagon that I bought. I mean, it was already basically done, whatever. I had a, my first old car was... Um, I had like a 61 Rambler with a 62 grill and it was chopped with a stretch Mercedes top on it. It was weird. It was out of central California. I had that for a little while, then a little wagon. Then I had a Pontiac Bonneville um, that was never finished. That was, that one was the closest I, I would like, that could have been the first car before the van. And then I sold that to uh, Australia and the guy completely redid it. It looks awesome. Well, take us take us to the next the next iteration and the most recent iteration, and that's St. Christopher. We got the awesome barf bag. We'll talk to the story about the reason that I get it, understand it, think it's awesome. How long had you been contemplating that car? You said you had names for cars, and you've got names for that. Did the name come first? Did the design come first? What came first? No, the name didn't come first on that one. Um, I was actually looking for a thirty two five window and uh, couldn't find them. They like. The prices were through the roof, like they are now still. And um, I saw a couple of them, and it just couldn't work out a deal. So I ended up buying um, a full fender, unchopped 34, and uh, took it up. It's like weird to talk about because like I don't want to talk shit about the guy, but I I want to give him credit. But I was he did me dirty also, so I, it's like a little weird to talk about. But I took it up to a, a shop up in Northern California. And uh, he was basically working with the parts that he had and, you know, setting the engine back and stuff like that. I originally wanted to do a um, like a 406 Chevy with in- injected um, specifically because I wanted to make magnesium church valve covers. Like that's the only reason I wanted a small block Chevy. And then once the Hemi became available, it was a no brainer. I mean, it just fills up yeah. that engine. Sure. Um, so it was up there and he was working on it and, uh, I was getting pictures and then I wasn't getting any pictures, but I was still sending money and we kind of had a couple of talks and I knew I had to, to pull it out of the shop eventually, but he did help establish the look and he needs, you know, 
I do let people know that, but, uh, you know, he'll claim he built the whole thing or I fucked him over or whatever. So there's going to be people on his camp, people on my camp. And yeah, that's the I, first I, bit of drama I've ever heard in the automotive and hot rod industry. Like yeah, yeah. generally, it generally never happens that way. Very I could not believe how many people told me that that happens and you take it out of one shop. So I knew Donnie Welch, um, from drag races and stuff like that, who worked for Bill, and um, I talked to him a couple of times about getting my car over, but I was so scared about, I mean, I, I, when we pulled, picked up the car, I, I, I'm completely surprised that I left with all my teeth, but we did. Wow. And we got it to, over to Bill's shop and Bill gave it a once over and he's like, hey, we'll call you in a week or so. And he, he called me and he's like, oh, I got three bad options for you. It's like, <laughs> son of a bitch. So, um, I mean, it was basically, we could put Band-Aids all over the car. Uh, you're probably going to kill yourself in it. Um, don't even know if it'll run. Or uh, you could walk away from it. Um, he's like, the perfect world would be if we could, you know, change some of it back, sell it, and then have enough body uh, money, and you could uh, start from scratch. And I was just like give me a minute to think about this. These are not good decisions. And like a week later, um, I go, I believe in the car. I want to do it. So I go, let's try to sell it. And like within a day or two, his dad called him and said his neighbor was looking for a ratty 33, 34 Ford um, to buy that he could finish building with his kids. So Bill changed some stuff on it. We figured out a deal and, uh, literally bought a new body from American Pickers. I mean, a full roller and everything, sold the chassis, kept the body, um, kept the fenders off the first car, the wheels and the Hemi. And I think that's about it. Um, and start from scratch. And we had enough money to buy, I think, a new car and build a chassis. But everything else was done. I mean, it was re-chopped, re everything was redone. I've, sure. I've asked this before. Um, you know, listeners are going to hear the same thing, but how crystal clear was that picture in your mind or was it foggy and it started getting clearer along the way as it started coming together? It was, especially the paint was getting clearer. Um, the, the engine was set back at the first shop. I mean, it, it was sitting pretty good, but like the header, the, the headers were never going to be able to fit to the block. And I mean, there was like expanding foam in the deck lid and uh, the suspension bound getting onto the, the trailer or whatever. So, um, but I know the first rendering I did with stripes was, uh, June of 2016 that I had stripes on the car and it wasn't what ended. And I, you could tell that like, I wasn't super confident in them yet. Um, they were wider, more vertical. They lined up on the back door instead of all leaned back. And it was two tone gold with one like cream color, uh, stripe near the front of the car to kind of weigh it down. Um, but yeah, that was, I can't imagine if that paint job would have come out eight years ago or seven. I got a handful of shit. Oh yeah. It's a, it's a, more, like it now. Now. It's a more inclusive, uh, society now. Yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Right. yeah. So, yeah. So, well, so how far along in the build? Um, I mean, when you're starting, you say you, you told Bill that you believe in the car and Bill Ganahl, South City Rod and Custom. Builds yeah. awesome shit. Builds awesome wow. shit. Been on here. Love those guys to death. So you say you believe in the car. We're going to sell this one. You sell this one. His dad gets it sold. You start on that. Obviously, at some point, Bill's starting to ask, like, what's this thing going to look like? What are you thinking of color? Or what are you thinking of this? Are you dodging that question, or do you just you just rip the Band-Aid off oh, and tell him? That. He knew that that was a distinct possibility going into the build that I wanted, that that's what I wanted. But I'm also like, I don't know everything about cars, obviously, but, um, when I work with somebody like Bill, like I go to them for a reason because he let them do what they do. And I want them to be proud of the car as well. Like if they're not, if they're fucking well it, said their name on that car, I don't want them to do it. Like they have to be on the same page. And it, this isn't like anything he's done before. He's a one color kind of a guy. Um, but we had narrowed it down to colors. So I had, I'd narrowed it down to these four and then, um, I couldn't figure it out like which, which ones to do. And, uh, let me see the orange and the uh, brown. It was going to be these two colors, the whole, like 
the whole car was going to be these two colors and the one stripe that goes through the C pillar was going to be all um, gold leaf. That's where we were at. And then Bill was like, why don't you try all those colors? And I actually had to add two other ones to this to, to get the amount of stripes I like. And then finding the placement of the stripes, like the one sacrifice we really made was it going through, it goes through the door handle and I didn't want to, but if we stood them up more, it was gonna leave a tangency by the running board. And then I couldn't have done the design around the louvers on the top. I tried to, tried to help out the painter a little bit, and, and, you know, run them through louvers or stuff like that. But Bill knew. Dude, you Bill don't knew. sound OCD at all. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <It's, laughs> I can see, I can see hives starting right now just thinking about it. Yeah, exactly. And then Bill, so uh, we started leaning them back and leaning them back and leaning them back. And I mean, but I did, you know, I did them. Uh, and there was a point where we got away from the stripes when it came out in bare metal, uh, I still had planned stripes. And if you look at the show card, there were there were diagonal stripes in two-tone wine color with uh, gold on it. Like that was the show card. I oh, I gave it away early, different colors, but I gave it away really early. And then at that show, I started thinking, I'm like, you know what? I really like my dad's drag racing helmet and he's suffering health-wise. Um, maybe I paint it like the helmet. And I tried so hard I mean, I probably did a hundred renderings. Bill said did, did some with his crayons and the other guys at the work, they did some. Jimmy Smith did some, Steve Stanford did some, John Bell did some, and I just could not solve my dad's helmet as the car and went back to the stripes. And it's the best thing I ever did. I absolutely love it. Dude, I think it's amazing and we'll get there. But what you just said, talking about how many renderings of all those different colors to try to recreate your dad's helmet. Can you not gather all that and make one big print of all of those renderings? Imagine how fucking cool that would be to see all those interpretations from all those different artists of what that, of trying to get there. I want to see that. I'd love to see that. That'd be fucking cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's some random ones. And some is people like uh, a lot of it had to do with scale, like how big it was like my dad's helmet had like swirls, like Art Hensley swirls. Um, and then, uh, it was like wine and like a laughing, like a pinkish silver. I mean, it's a gold leaf. It's such a cool helmet, but, um, I, I was like, I wanted it to be asymmetrical over the whole car, but then going from like a wheel well up onto a door where there's like a 90 degree turn and stuff like that. Um, I was just like, it just, it didn't work. Yeah. The last, I think the last iteration of that one was just the fenders because they were so round and then I could have gone black or wine or something like that with the car and just have crazy fenders, but the stripes kept calling my name. So when, when do you remember the first time that you saw it painted together with your own eyes? Well, I went up there to see the painting process, but it wasn't, it had to be done apart. Yeah. Uh, right. The first time I saw it all together was Grand National Roaster Show, other than in person, but the Grand Nationals. Okay. And did you know instantly that's what you had envisioned and instantly were you like, <laughs> Told people, you. people are going to hate this? Told you, motherfuckers. <laughs> uh, we knew before it was painted that people were going to hate it. I mean, we joked about it quite a bit, but um, it wasn't for anybody else. Yep. And I, I, I can't. I just don't go to car shows and find a car that I hate and then go online and tell everybody how much I hate it. I just don't understand. Yeah, that. That's well, what every, yeah, you're not like most other people. And so yeah, yeah, exactly. that. We, <laughs> we try to, we try to allocate at least an hour a day to go on and leave negative comments on social media <laughs> yeah. and tell somebody how they would I like, do something. I that's generally, just what, how you live your life. I try to carve out from like nine to like ten thirty. I like <laughs> to get to work, get things started and right. then, just carve that out to just, juices yeah, to just like leave a shit ton of negative comments. I, tell you what, that people I, tell you, I don't know if you guys have done this and, and Kobe, you should try this. You should try ending your night after everything's done, right? Spend a, spend about 15 minutes at about, you know, 10, 30, 11 o'clock when you're winding down the day, trying to get ready for the next morning. Just hop on YouTube, watch a couple videos and just give it a thumbs down. You can't do that anymore. Yeah, they eliminated yeah, that. They eliminated, they eliminated the thumbs down? Yeah. I don't believe that. The thumbs so. down is the more passive. Like, that one almost gets you more. Because you're like, yeah. that's <laughs> what did he like? <laughs> just that's just a... <laughs> like, 
Yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah. I'll tell you that it's, it's mind blowing to me. I mean, I, I love the car. I really do. I mean, I, I, I I'm super into okay. six. Well, I'm super into '60s uh, slingshot. God. Like, I love, I love that era. I mean, that's obviously where the car was inspired from. I mean, it's dragster yeah. slingshot inspired, uh-huh. right? It's you know, yeah. no radiator, nothing on the front of the motor. Radiators in the back, obviously, but it's it's a very it's drag. Cold, yeah, yeah, yeah right, air cold <laughs> Porsche, <laughs> right? Inspired by the Germans, but, yeah. but it's, it's People, fucking rad. I mean, who, like you could take or leave, I'm sure people could take or leave the stripes. Right. But who could possibly makes it, what makes somebody have to say something negative, like to go out of their way to say something. And what, what, and what empowers you? Like, why are you right? You know, it's just, it's, it's just personal too. A lot of those attacks were personal. Like, this painter should never paint a car again, or the paint job is a piece of shit and, or the paint job is awful. And I'm like, no, the paint job is phenomenal. The you design. Suck. Might suck. <laughs> <laughs> the design yeah. you know, Maybe like, you suck. Yeah, if you don't like it, blame the design on me, but like, don't blame the painter. Cause the, it's amazing. Because in. Oh, we got a visitor. Oh, oh. Look at that. Yeah, you got a horse. Yeah. That's a big uh, little, little lap dog. Get yourself a little lap dog there. <laughs> yeah, I know we had some visitors from uh, a long time ago from uh, Australia, and um, they're like, does that guy have a fucking deer? <laughs> deer. <laughs> Is that a great so, dame? Yeah, it's a yeah. dame. It's a big boy. Yeah, she's old. She's like 10. That's awesome. Yeah. So, it's a, a, it, human nature for whatever reason. Like, it's not near as personal. There's no personal gratification in selecting the camp that's easy and saying good things, right? Everybody has to put their self in a tribe, right? Sometimes there's multiple tribes to pick from. Sometimes there's, I'm going to be, I'm going to be for this. I'm going to be anti this. I'm going to be that. When it comes on the car side of things, it's still the same human beings, right? It's still the same human nature where you've got to pick this or this or this or this. I'm, I hate big wheels. I hate small wheels. I hate airbags. I hate this. I hate this. I, it's never personally gratifying to those people that like to to wallow in fucking negativity to say it's not it's not my cup of tea but the guy did a good job on the car that doesn't do anything for them that is you can also li- just like shut up and not say anything negative at all but just, but that you doesn't don't like it you don't like that it releases no dopamine that does no type of personal like satisfaction of being like i am going to tell everybody else how important i am by telling this guy how shitty his thing is. Yeah. Then most of them are in mom's basement eating hot pockets. Yeah. Hey, you know, I'm talking shit about nothing, hot nothing wrong with a hot pocket. <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> um, you know, their, their accounts are going to be private or, you know, they got 14 followers or whatever. So you just can't, I mean, I, I engaged more than I should have. I mean, usually it was your car's fucking mm-hmm. ugly and I just say, thank you. And then, um, uh, <laughs> But I know one guy posted on there and I tried, I didn't want to get back to him, but he said something like, uh, you ruined the car with that paint job. And I just said something like, my bad, I'll make sure I get your approval next time I paint my car. And then he responded, which I couldn't believe that usually shuts him up. And then he said, um, it's your car. You can do whatever you want. And I said, I did, did. but you're still being a little bitch. (laughs) (laughs) And another guy said, um, like my favorite negative comment about the car is uh, imagine how much it's going to cost to repaint this car once you realize what a huge mistake you've made. Mm, that's good. But one. if it was all black, it would have been cool, but it wouldn't have been this. It right. wouldn't have been saying mm-hmm. super. You got way more attention. Now you're getting both sides of the positive end. I want to know how many, how many people say something negative to you in person. Or say something to Bill. I bet you'd be or, surprised. You think I could, that, see, I could yeah. see an old fucker being like, hey, heh, not for me. You like, think so? Yeah, just oh, like yeah. the subtle, am I right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People, like, especially, um, I know at The Rock, I was kneeling down, taking a picture, like, rear three quarters, and an a older couple walked by, and the lady was like, oh, my God. <laughs> go, yeah, it's not for everybody. And she goes, I'll say, and she just kept walking. Dude, if you'd have cracked that dude's wife right in the mouth and knocked the two fronts out, I guarantee you that would have gone all over. Nobody would have said shit after no. that. I love it. a nice car. I love it. <laughs> so good. I'm paint mine that color. Man, I'm telling you what, people get away with too much fucking bullshit. 
the, see, the comments are crazy. I mean, I listen to Rogan talked about it a lot, right? And he says, never read the comment. Never. Yeah. I, I think he's, I think he's full shit on that. I think he's, I think he's read. Oh, all, he's read the comments. I think he's read the comments. Yeah. I mean, I've read I a lot wish, of the comments. Some of them are hurtful, man. I mean, some of I them wish are... we would have filmed at the Grand National Roaster Show people's reaction because it was probably 50 50 there, love hate. Um, and a lot of it was like uh, one of my friends said, um, I don't think they don't like it. I think they don't understand like the roots of it and where it came from. Yeah. So, and then now it's probably 70, 30, 80, 20, where it, it grows on people, especially if you see it in person. I mean, it doesn't look, it's not brown, red, and yellow. It's gold, candy, deep. I mean, the, it looks like in a photo, it looks like a masking tape instead of gold leaf. And so when you see it in person, some people might change their mind a little bit, but there's still plenty of people that thinks I screwed up a perfectly good car and that's, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not telling you this because you're on here. If, if, if I didn't like it, I would, I leave would a probably, shitty comment. Yeah. No, I would probably Under just like name, not say anything at all. I wouldn't tell you I didn't <laughs> like it, but I would just not, I wouldn't say you I just liked go it, on with your life. Yeah. I would just go on okay. with my life. But I, everybody, you guys know I'm yeah. an, I'm an earth tone guy. I'm a gold and brown and I, that's my color palette. I love that shit. When I first saw the pictures of it, I instantly was like, I get it. I love that block stripe. I love the history behind it. I think it's fucking cool. Um, and I, I still to this day love that, love that fucking car. Do you have a story about an iconic builder guy, somebody out there that you were surprised negative or positive on the comment and you can leave their name out of it, but I, I, I would be surprised if there wasn't somebody that said something positive that was surprising to you that they actually liked it. Um, Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I, I think that there would be the positive comments, a couple of, uh, a couple of negative comments, like a guy I know that like, um, you know, goes to the drag races, has a ton of cars, um, builds some nice stuff. I know he posted, um, missed it by a mile. Mm. And I'm like, <laughs> Okay, like that one was a little bit surprising. Um, I did ask Pete Eastwood what he thought about it, and I don't think he loves it, but he said that for what I did, it could not have been done better. Like well, the stripes are perfect, the layout is good, the whatever. But he, I, he's like, I would never in a million years do that to a car. That's that's a. A little underhanded. That's be like you're pretty yeah. smart for a, for a slow kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you, and it was, you know, it's like, oh, that's an intriguing way to do it. Like, he has ways of saying it without, like, making you feel like a total idiot, even though I knew exactly what he was doing. But, I mean, I took it as a compliment from him, so. You got to start going, you got to start going after these guys, like, wives and shit when they start doing that. When they start making comments, stuff, be like, I can change the color of this at any time, and it's going to be way cheaper than divorcing that fat bitch that you're married to. Whoa. Like, you, know, this, <laughs> you, you made I mean, that decision. Like these yeah, people are. That's, that's getting. That's pretty confrontational. Yeah. Oh, they, you got to. There's other. There I needs think. to be rep, rep, you know, repercussions for people's actions. Okay. People think they can just get away with fucking anything, and there, it, it's, it's, it's fucking time to put an end to it. Uh, you're a little aggressive. Twenty twenty four. I mean, you're talking twenty twenty. No, I'm not. Are you talking about like? Knocking some lady's front teeth out. Well, I'm saying he should have done that. <laughs> like, hey, he, should have done that. I mean, he doesn't have to do it. Yeah, right? he doesn't have to do it. He should have done that. No, I'm just. It's easy when you're, like you said, everybody starts getting accustomed to to leaving, leaving negative comments. If you tr truly don't like something so bad that it's forcing you to leave a negative comment instantly, right there, just don't watch that thing. Don't follow yeah. that thing. Don't consume that media anymore. You don't have to do it. And then at that point, you don't have to leave a negative comment. You don't have to do anything. The thing is, is when somebody feels empowered that they can leave that negative comment, right? And in such a hurtful way that means nothing, then everybody else feeds on that. They see that and they're like, oh, you think that was hurtful? Watch how hurtful I can make this. And they probably didn't watch the video or didn't even look at the picture of the thing that they're doing. It's just a feeding frenzy at that point. If people started getting punched in the mouth, right? For doing yeah, stupid shit like that, you would stop doing that because people don't do that shit in person like they do on online. But they are starting to do it in person way more now because they they've gotten so accustomed to doing it online. And they're like, I can say whatever I want to. I can walk up to the guy. Oh, nice try. I don't like that car. 
If you did that 20 fucking years ago and you got popped in the fucking mouth, you think you'd do it again? No, you'd never do that again. Right. You don't want to get popped in the mouth at a car show. You went to a car show to have fun, right? (laughs) So don't get popped in the mouth. Where did hitting the guy's wife in the mouth come from? Oh, I said, when is easier your target? Well, if that's the person that said something, right? And I guarantee that dude would probably tell everybody else, like, yeah, tell you what, you don't talk yeah, shit about yeah. Kobe's car. <laughs> look, at, look at Martha over here. Yeah. She's, got a She's talking with a lisp. <laughs> the last time I thought about clapping back to somebody, and it was a keyboard guy or whatever, and he said something, your car is fugly. I, but I, I literally got probably, I hate your car, your car is effing ugly. I, was, I probably got a DM every day for eight months straight. With that car. I mean, Good it was grief. every day. Here's here, oh, another picture of TC's helicopter from Magnum PI. And I'm like, man, that guy wishes it had a Hemi in it. <laughs> <laughs> TC's helicopter. <laughs> oh. yeah. I, I've got 50 of those emails with that on it. But the last guy that said something was um, oh, your car, soup, whatever it was. And then um, I went on. I usually go onto their page first, see if it's private or whatever. And um, I started looking and he had painted some helmets and stuff like that. And it looked like he used a broom. And I was just like, this is like picking a fight with a handicapped kid. It's really <laughs> not fair. And I just. Yeah, I don't. I responded to anybody's comments since. You just don't know where they're coming from or whatever. So I, I try not to engage, but I, I usually fail. I mean, you think back about the back in the day. You telling me that somebody walk up to Larry Watson and tell him that you know I don't like those flame style. I don't like the crab claw look. Right? You're gonna walk up to Ed Big Daddy Roth and tell him he don't like people you know, probably whatever did. it was. I guarantee you people go, did. And I, 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 I'm, I don't think that people did. I do not think people said the negative things to the person that put that creativity out there to their face back then. I just can't believe it. I, I Maybe think, I'm wrong. You know, I, I think just don't believe uh, it. Anytime you do something edgy, you're always going to get flack. Like if you walk around in just a gray sweatsuit, nobody's going to come up to you and be like, fucking gray sweatsuit? What the fuck is the matter? With, why would you wear it? Look at this guy. Like, I mean, maybe if it's a non-hooded sweatshirt it's a little they always sometimes look like there's something wrong with you but, <laughs> velcro but, shoes right but back, point yeah. being if you if you played like just this if you play it safe nobody's ever going to say something but if you do something edgy somebody's always going to have something to say about it because they don't have the fucking balls to do that you know it, i just don't know why you can't voice your uh dislike or displeasure strictly by not consuming whatever that is that you don't like just don't, just don't consume it. Yeah. Don't look at move, it. Move don't eat it. it. Don't order it. Don't watch it. Don't do any of that kind of stuff. Move on to something that you do like. You don't have to leave positive or negative reviews. You don't have to leave a positive review for something that you like. Just watch it and enjoy it and like it and then con- continue to consume that media that you like, whatever that is. There's no reason in telling somebody, I just experienced your creativity. And I wanted to let you know, I did not like it. I did not like it on this level. I didn't like it so bad that these are the expletives that I'm going to use to explain to you how I didn't like it. Like there's, I don't get, I don't get it. I really don't. Yes. I don't like broccoli, but I don't go on Instagram and tell them that it tastes like shit and it stinks and I don't like that color. You just don't eat it, right? You just don't eat broccoli. And back to Ed Roth, he was pretty big, so... You, he was a big guy, so yeah. maybe no medical sandwiches for that guy. I think he passed away today, right? 20 years ago? Or 20, was it really? Three, it was, yeah, 20 years ago today. 23, I think, yeah, I think it was 2001, April 4th. 20, Whoa. 23 years yeah. ago. Uh, uh, all right, standard question time. All right, bring it. All right, first one, we're going to start off a little different. People are starting to... People starting to cheat, right? They're okay. starting to get prepared, right? Somebody got to throw them off the game. Throw a little curveball. Best Next. piece of advice you've ever received. I didn't see that one. So that was, yeah, that was question number two. It was oh, you're just one. used to this, the same questions. <laughs> just going to change the order. Okay. Change the order. Yeah. I didn't even know I'm there. not getting crazy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, got it. I didn't know there was an order. I, just... I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a negative comment. I do not like you. you. Punch him in the mouth. You should have just kept that to yourself, dude. Just like, go on about so your day. I'll turn the tables a little bit and do the advice I give instead yeah. of All right. who gives me. Um, and there's a little reason. Like, so when I started church, like, or before I started church, I would come up with an idea for big oversized silkscreen prints or just cows of cars or whatever. And I'd start it. 
And then um, I wouldn't lose interest, but I, I'd be full bore into it. And then I'd come up with another idea. I got to kick the first idea to the side and then I start the second one. And it just kept going on and on and on. And my family had to be so frustrated that I just wasn't seeing anything through. So um, now uh, I told myself next project, I'm, I'm doing it. I don't care if it's good, bad, makes money, doesn't make money. And that was church. So I usually say, and I'll tell it to myself, and I usually tell it to Sarah because she's kind of at the same place and her like trying to come up with something is either do it or don't do it. Like those are really your choices. Like it, whether it's what you eat, what you drink, um, kind of cars you're going to build, uh, being an asshole to somebody, like either do it or don't do it. And then you got to own it. Yeah. Um, the other one that um, Sarah gave me and I think she got I think she got it from um oh man uh I'm gonna forget that guy's name Neil Patrick Harris and it's um NPA no matter what you're doing if you're having a if you're having a rough day or whatever is um be awesome instead like that just mm. stop what you're doing quit being a dick or whatever just be awesome instead and go go create something go write something or you know give someone a hug I that's one that I really don't use enough, but I really like it. Oh, Doogie dropping the knowledge. Yeah, Doogie yeah. Hauser is a smart <laughs> motherfucker, Doogie Hauser. <laughs> yeah, be awesome instead. Don't suck. That's good. Uh, all right. Best car movie and why? I'm interested in this one yeah. from you. Being a, I want to go in a different poster, direction. Yeah. I like the same ones that everybody else likes. I mean, I like the um, Days of Thunder. I like the Gone in 60 Seconds. Um, when I was a kid, there was a bunch of them that, uh, I liked a lot of them scared the shit out of me, like, uh, Cobra with the, you know, the murder, <laughs> Marion, um, Marion Death, Cabretti, Death Race, fucking Death, badass. Death Race 2000 with David Carradine. Had oh, a bunch yeah. of in. Um, the one that cracked me up was, uh, Six Pack. Do you remember a movie called Six yeah. Pack? With oh yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, Na the NASCAR guys. Yeah, John right, Willsby's favorite movie. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Kids, was that yeah. his favorite? Yeah, he loves six pack. Loves uh, six pack. So, most people think I'd go down the drag racing, like Heart Like a Wheel, Funny Car Summer, sure. um, even Seven Second Love Affair is a really good one. I mean, it's only an hour or whatever. But um, I am forever a five year old, and I am going with Cars, the animated one. All right. It's, it Solid. is a good movie. It's a good movie. There's, I mean, it's, there's, there's adult like, humor. There's there. adult humor in there. Yeah. Oh, the little, uh, the little tramp stamp pinstriping on the yes. board, yeah. stuff like that. And I mean, it's like, be good to people. Don't be an idiot. Uh, you know, and then all the little details with the rock formations being Cadillac fans and stuff like that. I yeah. just think yeah, that's such a ton of hidden stuff. And that is watch it and just like, good, ah, I get that. If you're movie. a car person, you yeah, pick up yeah. on a ton. It was yeah. great. It made, uh, like having a toddler tolerable. Right, like you can <laughs> watch a movie. Oh, you can, you can yeah. watch it, and I enjoyed reading. We had some big cars book. <laughs> Such and, a great dad thing to say. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'd read the book, and I I like doing it. You right. know, I like the whole experience. The kids and things. The whole, all of it, all of it. Yeah, right. <laughs> all right. Pull. So, I don't know if these guys are feeling creative, but sometimes we 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 want to guess. We're going to get some information before you you turn sixteen in. Uh, ninety three. I did. I'm 93? asking. No. I'm guessing. No, eighty nine. Yeah. I'm fifty two. Damn. Dude, good good job. You got, Congratulations. You got to remember, most people age in the better than you. Like <laughs> you look, you you have an you've accelerated your aging process, right? Like you, you look sixty. He <laughs> looks young for his age. He got the Dolishenko grays going. Yeah, <laughs> but even Dell, Dell, yeah, but Dell's yeah, cool. Dell fucking yeah. copied that shit for me. <laughs> right. Yeah. Are you going with the car? You're, we're trying to pull. Yeah, we're gonna try to pull okay. a car. So you said eighty nine. Eighty uh, nine. Yeah. You turned eighty. You turned sixteen. Eighty nine. Did you have all right? <clears throat> hand me down car. First car. No. You bought it. Yeah. And uh, for clarification, my dad had a deal with all of us. Um, so my dad, my dad, as I said, was a school teacher. Uh, he's taught at Fremont High School and um, he actually transferred to my high school my freshman year. So he taught like most of my friends how to drive and stuff like that. One of my friends, pretty funny, uh, one of the smartest kids I've ever met. Um, 
he only got one B in all of high school and my dad gave it to him in PE. <laughs> Unbelievable. And the guy's like a doctor now. And I mean, the guy's <laughs> just a wizard, but the one B, but my dad's deal with us was, um, we could have any car we wanted, but we had to pay for half of it. So if we could only afford, you know, a couple grand and back then the minimum wage was like $2 and 15 cents or $2 and 35 cents or something. So, but so yeah, you, so that was, you could have any car you wanted if you paid for half of it. Yeah. We'd pay for half and my dad would pay for half. All right. 89, 89. But how much does it cost to save up with $2 now? And you started working <laughs> at what age? You've been working what a year, a couple years, year or two. Yeah, yeah. All right, eighty nine, Southern California, right? Northern California. Northern at the California. Time. Dad was a drag race guy. Um, man, this is difficult. It's. T- I think we're all going to miss on this one. Honestly, I think this hey, is. We're going to. But take I've, a got shot, an, I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I've got something in mind. Go ahead. Go after. I'm it. thinking uh, we're probably. Mid to late seventies, pretty clean, but used. Uh, Vega. Oh, that's where I was going. Yeah, because I'm thinking you probably you saw them out, and you're like, this could be very easily converted to maybe a funny car, right? right? Or a, it's a drag a swing car. And a miss. Yeah, I was, going, I was going Vega or Chevette, just tall guy, small car, like all the drawings in the background, little Ed Big Daddy Roth drag yeah. car style. It's like a mini that's... second gen Camaro. No, I, you're oh. off. You're off. <laughs> okay, you're off. This is uh, my dad did have a Pro Street Vega though. He always had <laughs> not that <a> far off. <laughs> not that far off. <laughs> oh, the senses, <laughs> the fucking senses, man! You cannot argue with it. Um, <clears throat> man, I'm, I'm, fuck, I'm going Z28. I am going Z28, and I don't know <laughs> really? why. Yeah, no? I am like an off no, the show. No, no, this is this is gonna be. Second 80, gen, late second gen. Yeah, this is going to be 80 to 85. Man, I'm very, very specific. And it's a Z28. Uh, solely because of the stripes? It's 80 to 85 Z28. It's my guess. You got both guys, Chevette, Vega. I'm going Z28. 82 Camaro Z28. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, gold? You're doing Holy good. shit. Yeah, he's doing research. <laughs> I swear <laughs> on my children's lives. Nicely done. No research. Gold with gold velour interior and T tops. Hell yeah. Bring back the T tops. Hey. Hey. All I guess. That's, I'm proud of you. Man. I hey, the so <laughs> yeah, the I rock. They had that blue I rock, and I, this was my wannabe I rock. Hey, you can put some duct tape and some words on a poster, and I can. Guess cars. We all got our talents, you know? I think he's getting paid for his. He is. Yeah, I didn't say he's... He, I didn't put mine above his. I just said we've got skills. He's, he's way more talented. Thank you for clarification. <laughs> oh, he could be a mind reader, maybe shit. a psychic. Josh's palm readings and tarot cards. Josh's car predictions. <laughs> Pay me. I can tell you what car you used to drive. Yeah, I had the car, I know. That was pretty solid. Oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> Uh, best story about that car. Oh man. Definitely not, not one of my friends carving his initials in the back. Mm. Interior or exterior? Interior. Well, he, he was back Carving there. Back. Initial. <laughs> Into the, what, the seat back or what is he? Is he yeah, carving? it was on like the hard plastic. Plastic interior. Yeah. Uh, like a quarter yeah I guarantee plastic. you that. Yeah. Asshole. Was he back there, like, he was making a notch on his belt, or, like, he was back there doing some business? Or? <laughs> no, that had, the, that had those split, oh, the, the that split buckets, so it's hard yeah. to maneuver on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Drive um, shaft tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know I got, I, I mean, I think I had two speaking tickets in the first, like, three months, and I had to, had to let off the gas pedal a little bit. But yeah, it was a fun car. It was it was fun. But and then after that, I had a S10 Blazer, like a white, um, light gray, and then white. And we called it the Land Shark. And I, I mean, I sold my car to get the Land Shark for college. And then in college, being an art student, we put a huge uh, dorsal fin on the top at a foam core. <laughs> Just driving around the neighborhood, it was like, oh man, what a loser. <laughs> <laughs> and but, last but not least, we come to Jeremy's new favorite and his addition. Two yeah. standard questions, and that's the uh, 
your best law enforcement interaction story? Cocktails, if you Cocktails, will. Cocktails, yeah. My friends and I got pulled over at Memorial Park and I was in the driver. No, I was in the passenger seat and we all had to get out and do a breathalyzer. I was the only one that failed and I was the only one that hadn't drank. Really? Well, you got a little residual then from the previous guy. <laughs> well, it was the I one and they, they said that there was like a stigmatism or something like that. But I was the only one that didn't pass whatever they did with the fall of the eyes. Did you tell me you were just OCD? <laughs> no, I don't think that's <laughs> no, dude, it's fine. I'm just OCD. What'd they do? What'd, what'd they do with you after that? Did they take you well, in? Nothing. I was nothing because oh, I was in the driver okay. passenger seat. Yeah, but the other two, they passed no problem. They were both drinking. So yeah, yeah. this just goes down. This just shows how inaccurate those things are. Yeah, yeah. As I pour another drink. <laughs> uh, well. Dude, it's been fucking awesome. Tell everybody that's listening how what can they do to go and support you? I know you got some shirts for sale. You got some. You got magazines. You got this. Where where, where can they go and what can they do? Churchequipped.com. and there's only a couple of shirts. I think I just pretty much have a St. Christopher shirts, love and hate, um, and uh, some magazines left. I haven't done too much. Uh, turns out I, I like doing cars better than. Um, I like doing the magazines. I do. I would like to do one more maybe with either all ugly cars, like all disasters. And, um, or I think I'd really like to do, it was probably taboo, but, um, a crash and burn drag racing issue or just a car crash issue, like with NASCAR and stuff like that. It could be a many photographers, but, um, cool. that would be cool. I'd rather do cars. I mean, I got a car list I want to do and I don't have the money to do it. So if you got any, um, sugar mamas out there with most of their teeth, get all this. Or none of them. Need, hey. need, need, <laughs> yeah. Just need, I got, a, I got cars on the list, but I, I don't uh, have the money to do it. So, Dude, he's okay. fucking, he's, he's talented. He's creative. Yeah. He's got a great Dane. Yeah. He's got his own house. He's got to think, what, what more could you looks, want? Looks great for 51 years old. I mean, yeah. it looks half. Fuck Josh's stop age. Stop bringing up the fucking age, right? Well, I'm just, it's part of the, it, we're, you know, you're yeah, marketing he's, him. We're, we're that, marketing him. That motherfucker's 46, 47 max. Anyway, it's besides There's the no point. way he's over 50 years old. Uh, That's a, he's, he's fucking lying. He's fucking <laughs> lying. There's no fucking way. Uh, What's the next car or the next couple of cars? What, what's before? Yeah, I, I know you're not going to give out all your secrets or whatever, but you've got some ideas. What's what's the next one? Um, I have a 51 Mercury that we're going to fuck up pretty good. Yep. Uh, cool. So that's that's next. Do you know Cody Walls? Yep. He had the 49. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. So he's got um, he has a Merc of mine. It's uh, we it was actually. East My Coast Channel, like East Coast Channel job on yeah, uh, yeah, Instagram. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. super awesome. So That's he has cool that shit. one. That's like half baked, but um, we stopped that one in order to finish the thirty four, and so we're bare. It's like not, not as far, and we're gonna we'll we'll do something stupid on that for sure. And that one is uh, Senor Redondo. It's gonna be that name, I believe. Um, it's round. It's like. You're, you're the Spanish guy, right? So you got all the- <laughs> <laughs> Phil's the resident it's Spanish. Round. Yeah, so, I um, mean, that car's so round anyway. So um, I do want to do a 59 El Camino. Yes, um, it's red. With yeah. Bill specifically. That one is will be uh, Velvet Jelly. Velvet and- Jelly. <laughs> Love that name. That's a great band name. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Fucking punk band actually- name, Velvet Jelly. <laughs> So Sarah's from a small, she's from Mount Shasta up in Northern California. And she told me a story. Um, She went into a uh, combination Kentucky fried chicken Taco Bell. And there was an African-American transvestite behind the counter named Velvet Jelly. And I'm like, I am naming a car 100%. I'm that's a solid birth name, do you think? Yeah. Was that, was that, <laughs> yeah. It's not much there from birth, I don't think. No? <laughs> Tell you what, it sounds it sounds like a like a sweet treat from Trader Joe's. Velvet yeah. Joe. Have you ever had that Velvet Joe? Yeah, I can see Trader it right Joe's. Now. <laughs> yeah, top shelf. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. I, want to do 60, I want to do a 63, 64 Lincoln Continental. That oh, will you're, be, yeah, who doesn't? Everybody, for punishment. everybody wants one, though. Well, that one... Um, 
I mean, to make a bigger glutton, I uh, that one would get major changes on it, but um, I would uh, call that you had one shot. I almost no. I mean, I'm torn on names on that one. I mean, I'm anywhere between uh, Missing Link, Wilkes Booth. Oh, okay. Grassy yeah. Knoll. Grassy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Kennedy would be a good one, but like. Yeah. It's a little on the nose. Yeah. But, I mean, I was, I mean, but that one was going to be. Was it in like the like, eye uh, socket, not the nose? Yeah, that could have been Lee Harvey Oswald, but I think Wilkes Booth I like a little better. But that CIA, one. I think, CIA question mark? I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, hate, I hate to say it, but um, I would actually like that one to be electric. Hmm. There's nothing. There's uh, nothing to, to hate to say that. Yeah. I mean, I think that one fits I the bill, though. I've because always, I've always said that cars that don't necessarily have to have a sound associated with them. That'd be a car. Yeah, yeah that's one of them. It I'd doesn't like have to, to sound a, badass, right? I'd like to do a box truck of all things as a, a hauler because I mean I don't have a truck or trailer, so I have to drive St. Christopher if I'm going to go somewhere. I mean, unless it's a long distance, I mean I can get it towed or something, but I don't have a truck or trailer, so. Do you ever Dude. call it St. Chris? It like just to sure it up. No, right. but I can't get a I can't get a license plate for it. Like St. Chris, Crips, um, all of them, Hemi, Hemified, stacked. Like all of those are are taken. So do do the Lincoln Electric and do it Nicola T. Oswald. It's a mouthful. It is, but it's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot. So, yeah, that's, I that's a lot there. I Nicola. got names. Lee Harvey Oswald, yeah. Nikola Tesla Oswald, electric, no Kennedy, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all there. Fucking hey, <laughs> when when you get to that point, the next one's got to have a roadster shop chassis. You know how to get in touch with us. We'd love Absolutely. to be able to work together. Oh, for the, for the El Camino for sure, hundred percent. Fucking, that's an easy. Bill's one. already built, like Bill knows the Merc is first, and then he's all, he's already sending me pictures. He's just the best. I just have to say he is. The best freaking guy in the world. He's so, a, he's he's yeah, really man. really fucking he's talented. A, Bill's a cool dude. Good, good human being and uh, talented as well. We haven't got to hang out with Bill. We've 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 had him on here. We've talked to him briefly at shows and stuff like that. But I I feel like we need a night out night on the town. Bill. Yeah, I'm with you. We need to we need to we need to know we need to know Bill more intimately. So we need yeah, to we need to plan. Time, we'll have to get. Get us both out there. I need to get out there. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah. shit. We're going to be in California in a couple of days. We need to we like, maybe hook up and. We're at? Yeah. We'll be in, uh, we'll be in L.A. Uh, on Sunday and Monday and then San Jose on uh, Tuesday. Yeah, going to a shark. Yeah, I'm about 15, 20 minutes <laughs> south of LAX. Don't even need to get on a freeway. Oh. Oh, well, maybe we'll. Uh, if you guys got time. No, if you don't. Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kobe, it's been awesome. We'll, uh, we got to do this again. We'll uh, try to hook up. And then the next one, uh, you or Bill, reach out. We'll do a fucking chassis. We'll, we'll take care of you. That'd be amazing. It's been fucking great, man. Everybody go to yeah. uh, you know Church Equipped and fucking get a couple of shirts. You're not going to get the shirts I got because I got the OGs. And they're sold out. Nobody's got the OGs. You gonna re you gonna re release those at some point? I'm gonna re release. I'm gonna do a new version of the cross wrenches. That was one of my best sellers. I've got um, that one. I've got that super, one. Um, so when I started the magazine, I started mailing them at issue number two hundred and fifty one. So the first person that bought one got number 251. So I have number one through 250 of all 10. And I want to put them in a matching numbered box set. And you'll get like a, I'll either redo a shirt or do a print or a water slide decal or something to go in it to make it a little cooler. But oh, it's dude, we, need, we need to, we'll hook up off of air. We need to do something. We need to do a giveaway for the, for the oil and whiskey fans. We need to do some type of contest and a giveaway for that for one of those packages. That'd be great. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe yeah. even a t-shirt. Yeah. You know, we've been trying like hell. Well, we'll, we'll yeah, it's, it's way know. easier. To, he's got t-shirts. Right. We're, we're, we'll never, we're never going to have a <laughs> yeah. boil and whiskey we'll t-shirt. Just put it on the tag or something. We've been trying. Shirt. We've been trying for three years. Yeah. Turns out t-shirts are fucking hard to do. They are. When you don't do them. Yep. That's the hardest part is when, if you don't put any effort into it, it'll never get done. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Right. Kobe, it's been fucking awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks, dude. It was great hanging. Yeah, we'll see yeah. you soon. 
Sounds good. Take it easy, man. Appreciate it, fellas. Big thanks again to Kobe. Remember, you can keep up with Kobe on Instagram at Church Equipped. Go buy some fucking shirts. Buy some of the small magazines. Probably not a better uh, little yes trinket to have out on your coffee table, I would say. I mean, it's, exa- <clears throat> it's exactly the type of thing for every hot rodder, right? To flip Just through. pictures. Flip through it. Pictures. Awesome fucking pictures, yeah. man. Yeah. Every page you're like, oh, that's fucking cool. Oh, that's badass. That's nice. That's sweet. Yeah, everything's that great. That looks good. Yeah. Interesting background. Yeah, very cool. Yeah. Great dude. You've got a... Uh, whiskey review. We do have a whiskey review. We tend to miss the whiskey reviews, but this is one we've, worth... We've been hitting them. This is one worth reviewing. Go ahead, review. It's good. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's a couple hour show. Maker's Mark Private Select. Uh, what is this? 108.7 proof. This is something that uh, Mark Bowler gave us years ago. Bowler Transmission yeah. Barrel Pick. Bowler oh. Trans Barrel Pick. I, ch- I didn't know that before. Oaked I finished, changed, changed uh, my oaked, review. Oaked finished staves. I didn't know it was a bowler pick. So it's, uh, you know, I'm... I hate to say it, I feel bad, Mark, because it's a, it's a beautiful bottle and it's fantastic, but it's, it has sat in the collection for a little while. Just because when you see it poking up there and all you see is the, the wax top, you just think Maker's Mark, you know, because it's... What makes you think that? It's, it's very iconic, right? The, the <laughs> wax seal of Maker's Mark. And Maker's Mark's a great bourbon, but so it's, just, it is generally the type of bourbon that you just get, like... Phil said it. You get you get an old fashioned. Good in an old fashioned. You a, don't have a, a lot of options at a bar. Right. It's unfortunate. But not a, not always some good stuff. Not always the yeah. type of thing that I go to to drink neat. One hundred one is good. Drink, but forty six is good. Yeah, forty six is good. Must say, pleasantly surprised. I really really like it, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, first pour of that. It is like one of those bouquet type bourbons that's just loaded. Say that again. Bouquet. There you go. Bourbon's <laughs> much better. <laughs> and where it's just, it's got like all the flavors, you know? Yeah. It's, there's I'm a lot going on there. It smells great. Tastes great. It's got, uh, it's, it's complex, but it ain't, it ain't hard to drink. You know, it, it's not where you, it's not a lot of burn. It's not a lot of craziness. Yeah. For a uh, 108, no burn at all. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, all that talk aside. I, I like it quite a bit. What's your number? I'm going to go 7-2. Wow. Yeah. That's a number. I liked it that much. Phil, what's your number? Go 7-0. 7-0. I'm going to go 7-1. I'm going to go 7-1. Accurate reviews. That's a, nice, that's a nice little cluster. Oh, it's, it is really good. It would make uh, me, it, it has broken my stigma of some of those big names like, uh, you know, Maker's Wild Turkey is another one that I always shy away from buying any of the like higher end ones. Yeah, well, yeah, it always tastes like crap. Okay, so that wild turkey. I should continue to yeah, stay away from stay. it. All right, so well, then it's then it's broken my stigma of buying higher end makers, Mark. But the thing is, they get you on all the shit that they change the name of, and wild turkey does. That, we yeah, we'll go that on. Hardens Creek is one. Russell's Reserve. Okay, all wild turkey. Really? Yeah. 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 So all sh- that. So shut up. So well, <laughs> what I'm saying is, <laughs> just like we talked about with all of the negative reviews and like saying thing. Try some whiskey, regardless of the cost, regardless of the brand. You're either going to like it or you don't like it, right? Forget the fact that it's... Now, I will tell you, for me, I've tried just about all the Basil Haydens. I don't have to try them again. <laughs> I do not okay. like Basil Haydens. So you, Sam, uh, I am. That, that's fine. You used a process of elimination. Right. You worked through them and realized that they all suck. The makers, the maker stuff, tra- just regular, basic... Entry level makers. I when I got into whiskey, I liked makers. I don't like that anymore. The forty six is really good. Any of their private select and their barrel pick stuff, you never know what you're going to get. It's really some good shit. Uh, yeah, I'll say that. Try it. You, when you look at the big brands, uh, Makers Mark, Woodford Reserve. As you get more sophisticated, your collection grows. You drink tons of bourbons. You kind of scoff at them almost, right? Mm-hmm. You look at it as oh, it's yeah, maker's it's marker. Yeah. But when you go back to any of their specialty bourbons, they're pretty damn good. Yeah. I mean, almost everything uh, Woodford 
that yeah. like the double oaked Woodford. For the master selection, yeah, yeah, that master yeah. selection is on a different fucking so level. Even as advanced as you get in your bourbon drinking, as sophisticated as your palate becomes, yeah, you don't gotta, shy yeah. away from those big names. There's a reason that they've got a big name. There's some good shit there. Yeah, the the whiskey snob thing has gotten is gotten so out of hand, and it's it's so fucking cool. Once you build your collection, you can do the thing. But I mean. Used to be so much like, oh, it's just MGP. And it's Ross Squibb. It's sourced. It's not this. You're not distilling. Th-. But there's some people doing some awesome barrel picks with sourced bourbon. There's doing. They're doing, you know, finishes with sourced Blends bourbon. And, yeah. Well, Four, and four and Gate was a great example of that. Like hundred percent. Starts finishing goes. It's just yeah. you've got to try it. At the end of the day, we're not talking. Don't spend thousands of dollars to try a bourbon. Yeah, spend right. like spend, hundred maybe spend, spend anywhere from from forty fifty up to a hundred hundred and twenty dollars to try it barrel. Don't let the, what you spent on it cloud your judgment on it. Should it should taste great that's, because I spent X amount. That, that's how you build a bourbon collection, right? And then, when, and then when you find yourself in that situation where you splurge for the $120 bottle and it sucks, yeah. you, you give it, it to your, your buddies. Yeah, you give it to your friends <laughs> and you let them know this is a high-end bottle. You realize how much... It's a $120 bottle. just give like, this to anybody. Yeah, you can't get this. Right, I know yeah. I chase it a little bit. Right. Yeah. I searched everywhere. Try to find... Go ahead and try to find yeah. it. You want no, it. I, I don't want it because I don't like it, but you'll probably <laughs> love it. <laughs> With your lack of taste, you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> 7 two, seven one, and a seven zero for it's Maker's Mark... Private select the bolt. This is first of all, you can try to find this. You'll never find this because this is a bowler's pick, right there. That's super rare. Mark bowler's pick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One hundred eight point seven proof. White oak staves. <laughs> Fucking awesome bourbon. It's a buy it, seek it out, get it. Did you have a listener submission that you would like to talk about? Oh, I did. I completely forgot about that. And it's sitting. Mm. Right here. And the reason that I put this aside and we started with that is that I pretty much know this is not going to be great. That's not. But we're going to try it anyway. (laughs) Oh, we're going to try it? Yeah. So finish Mm, this up. I don't want to try it. You're going to have to because this was submitted, I think, probably for you. It's Old Camp and it is probably for me. Pecan whiskey. Is it a Florida Georgia line? Well, Tim, believe it or not, saw this sitting on my desk and anything whiskey related that sits on my desk or anything sitting on your desk Tim always jumps on it and he investigates it and he let me know that this is a Florida Georgia line oh, shit brand yeah FGL well, F- FGL uh, distilleries say no much more. like MGP if their if their whiskey is anything close to the quality of their music you're going to love it I'm sold but it came it came in a box that was there was Something that they do for a living that they do poorly, I'm sure something they do on the side is going to be that fucking much better. Maybe it's better if their music isn't very good. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and, and that's what they do for a living. Maybe they're better at other things. But it it came with no information, no card, no anything, no description, just a bottle well, in a box. Let's uh, do it. Let's give this a review before we taste it. Before, we, Oh, you want to? Well... Old camp. Okay. 35%. 70 proof. Like water. So it's 70 proof. Yeah, right. So, that, so that's an easy drinker. <laughs> water is like 65 proof. <laughs> right. And water is easy to drink. Yeah. So it's twist off. So Which that's a, always a high that's end. The first, I mean, Weller's twist that's off. That's the first yeah. sign. It is glass though. Uh, so yeah. And now no the description is with its slightly sweet. Tell you, who's, I'll tell you two guys are slightly <laughs> sweet. <laughs> That's he's not gonna be that sweet when he's <laughs> whipping the ass. ass. I'm, you're like, listen, I'm tired of everybody sending fucking messages like this, dude. Are they still coming? Fucking bring it the fuck on. New fucking Illinois, Northern Illinois ain't that far from Nashville, dude. I think we, I think we give it some time, like another camp. maybe another year with where their career is going. I think he might be willing to make an appearance on oil and whiskey to yeah. kickstart. With career. its slightly They're sweet down, and we're going smooth up, we'll drinking yeah, ways, we'll meet in the middle old camp is right at home on the rocks. We're face down 
in a pillow. <laughs> uh, or with your favorite mixer. Let's let's try this. I'm gonna tell you what. Ain't nothing says quality like a twist off. You everybody knows that <clears throat> fucking twist off is Dude, there's well or twelve years of twist off. Yeah. Right. It's not peach flavored though. No, I want you to pour it for me. <laughs> Thanks. That's enough. Careful. It's 70 proof. It's <laughs> enough. I'm good. I still got some in here. You've got to... For, we're not going to drink it by ourselves. <laughs> hey, hey. Dude, that smells like my gym bag. Yeah, I definitely want to try it Oh, now. my God. <laughs> it smells smell, like old smell muscles. It. <laughs> it smells like old ass muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> smell it. Hey, <laughs> John. It smells like peach. Your gym bag smells like peach? Oh, yeah. I guess when you really lean into it. it Take the like peaches peach. out of your gym bag. <laughs> what the fuck? That's awesome yeah. peach juice. Yeah. There's... Dude, you could give that to a toddler. You could. It's... All right. Do you like it? Here's Here's my review. It's a fucking, you get a sugar high before you get buzzed. Old Camp from FGL, Florida Georgia Line. Uh, what did it say on the back of it? It said it actually on here. Maybe they sent Slightly it. Slightly Sweet. Wonder. From Slightly Sweet. It's not whiskey. No, it's it's just like a peach. It's, pe- uh, it's peach flavored liqueur. Yeah. It's exactly what it is with no alcohol in it. So I'm going to give that... A little schnapster? Uh, you don't want to give that? <laughs> I can't do it. I you, wanted to give it a thumbs down. But I, I won't do that because that's anti... You would be going against everything. Everything that I think. Um, I mean, I just won't having, drink it again. having said that, isn't bashing their music kind of that, that way? Like, can't you just not like it? Well, I don't listen to it. I only, I only bring it up when you guys ag me on. I'm gonna give I'm gonna, it. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna give it a, a like no. Just drink. It's just a drink. It's not that bad. It's <laughs> just gonna give it a no review. Is where I'm at with uh, it. For for a beverage, I'm I'm gonna do this. Beverage. It's a five. For a whiskey. For a whiskey. It's a sub one. Oh no! It's a it's a it's a one. Two. Okay. It's unfortunately <clears throat> it's not whiskey. No, it just uh, you, you can't you, you can't, can't knock it because it's not whiskey. Uh, somebody could throw it on the rocks, make a cocktail out of it, and it's probably got its place. But it's can you mix it with look, whiskey? Th- listen, I mean, no bullshit. We're not even being stupid. It's not whiskey. It's seventy proof. It's peach flavored. It's the same thing as fucking Fireball, but not cinnamon flavored. It's peach flavored. Oh, it's better than Fireball. Kill, kill it. You, y'all want to drink it? Get hammered? It's not gonna happen. You're gonna have to drink the whole fucking bottle. It's just not. If it's it, not. It, yeah. If you want to get hammered and make, you want to roll your windows down. Not the. <laughs> what, uh, the Bruce. Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> In the what is it? What? Then they're in the back of a what? I don't know. There's music. <laughs> Something about a pontoon boat and a <laughs> fucking, yeah. It, don't buy old yeah. camp whiskey. Yeah. It's simple as that. Yeah. If you want to buy it for liquor, I mean, it's probably like 20, 20 bucks. You're in college. You want to get fucking hammered? Buy a couple bottles of it. You can buy cheap vodka and get you, get, get you way get you to the finish up. line <laughs> faster. Now get your stomach pumped way quicker than that. <laughs> Uh, thanks for listening to Oil and Whiskey with the Roacher Shop, an Ironclad original. We say this all the time. If you're listening right now, you've got the time. Go and leave a review. We get some decent reviews. Where? Where are the reviews? Wherever you're listening at. You You can can, leave a comment, I think. You can leave a comment on, on the, on the thing, on the YouTube. At the bottom. The, on the YouTube, you can leave a review. But if you're listening on Spotify... You're listening on your audio device. You can leave a review. You can do that on Spotify. Yeah, comment and a review. You can do that. We get some really good reviews. 
I'm going to make the statement right now. We're starting out the month of uh, it's April. April. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody knows that. April. We're starting out the month of April. We're going to give it the entire month of April. That's four episodes. Get fucking creative with your reviews. If you want to bring it with a review, we're going to pick the best review and we're going to send something special. Don't know what that is. It could be a, half, a third, <laughs> like, a almost, almost brand full new bottle yeah. of old camp. It, it could be we're coming up on another potential infinity bottle as I'm looking at all the things behind You us. never know what it's going to come. You never know what's going to come up. Right. Leave a fucking badass yeah. review. But I tell you what, before we finish this episode, you know what it might. If you believe the baddest ass review, right? You gotta, you gotta, guys, gotta bring it. It could include one of, possibly. We've got a new drop. Oh, he dropped it. I dropped it at one stage. Yeah, it's box. got our name on it. So, we've got, we got a special edition. We got some drops Do from we? Gerber knives, right? They sent us some shit to try out. We've got Ooh, to uh, that's pretty put sweet. these through their paces. Great. And, uh, oh, I got a white one. I like that little guy. Oh, and it's got, look at that logo on there. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. Little Roadster. Little RS. Ooh. We're going to be, uh, hey, the guys at Gerber were nice enough. They're okay. fans of the podcast. Nice action. Solid name, too. Uh, well, yeah, it's. I like that. It's a name. It's a last name. Last name, Gerber. It's like. Great. Everybody's last got name. last names. Like Smith. Yours isn't always liked. Ooh. That's a good knife yeah. right there. Yeah, okay. that is. That's not for you. Who's it for? <laughs> that was addressed to me. This one is made in <laughs> Portland. Oregon. All, every single one of these, all four, made in the U.S. Dude. Made in the United States. This is some good stuff. We're going to, hey, listen. Go ahead. You don't know if they're good stuff yet or not. We're going to put them through their fucking paces. We're going to see if they're badass. You're going to do some stabs? Look. It's been a minute since you've done some stabs. <laughs> oh, I haven't done stabs in a while. They sit four knives, right? That means one for each of us. You know what the fourth one goes to? Whoever wins the knife off. The best? No. I thought we were going to fight it. That's best, wrong. The best review. The best yeah. review. You leave a fucking good review, you're going to get at least... A Roadster Shop Edition Gerber knife. The one we like the least. And <laughs> some whiskey. Not Old Camp. You're not going to get Old Camp. That's cool. Nobody wants that. You're going to get something fucking cool yet to be determined. And we're going to talk about you on a future episode. Uh, thanks again. Thanks again to Kobe Gerwitz. I was fucking right. And I guess the fucking yeah, car. Dude, the cars. You fucking yeah. crushed it tonight. I'm, a, I'm, yeah. Prou yeah, I'm proud of you. Call Go me ahead. Mr. for the rest of the night. <laughs> Mr. Head. You're of that <laughs> age. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you again next week.